Uh, a very good afternoon, everybody. Uh, somebody also check the sound is going properly or not. Uh, so today is the first day of uh, the last session of our presentations. Semester four students uh, are making presentations. Uh, and today they are making presentations on 21st century uh, literature. As in the morning session also we remarked that 21st century literature means the literature published in the 21st century, not necessarily having the characteristics of 21st century. Uh, so literature which is published in last two decades uh, is a part of syllabus and on that uh, the students are going to make their presentation. So rather we can call it contemporary literature also. Uh, in this uh, afternoon session, we will have presentations by, let me share a screen for a list of the presenters and their topics. We will have first presentation by uh, Insia Fatema on unveiling the past historical references in the Ministry of Uttermost Happiness, followed by Mansi's presentation on Anjum's uh, uh, Anjum. I think uh, there is a necessary apostrophe there. Anjum as a transgender character. You can write as with small a. Keywords should be capitalized. Minor words no need to capitalize in title. Rally uh, will make it on corruption in Indian society. Uh, a revolution 2020 perspective with reference to Chetan Bhagat's novel. Payal will make it on Julian Barnes's The Only Story as a Memory Narrative. Uh, Uja's presentation on exploring the narrative style of Amitav Ghosh's Gun Island. Rajeshwari Ba on unveiling political power dynamics. Insights from a Revolution 2020. Riddhi uh, will make it on migration and human trafficking in Gun Island. Wrinkles uh, will be on exploring love, hate and human nature in vultures, I think with the reference to Ministry of Utmost Happiness. Rushalis will be on real life raghavs, exploring the past, present and future of journalism in India. And the last one will be by Upasna on Paul Roberts as an unreliable narrator in Julian Barnes's novel, The only story. So let's start with the uh, first presentation. Insia, you can come and start uh, your presentation. Hmm. Afterwards? No, but then you'll have to edit at both the places, all the places, even uh, uh, YouTube also it has gone. So how many places you will be able to edit? So uh, understand the things that uh, that's what I'm telling that you have to be in advance because a lot many things are connected with each other. So if you make mistakes somewhere, then everywhere it will be reflected. You can't edit everywhere now. So that's why in advance we ask that you make your topic clear in advance. So we can do lots of other work is to be done uh, as a follow up to uh, all these things. And these all things are to be learned. Uh, when you visualize the entire work, then you come to know that if I will make some change here, at how many places that change is to be reflected. So I have to inform in advance that I have made the change. If I will not inform, then it will go as a uh, wrong information at other places. Yes, I can start. Uh, very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today on the first day of presentation of semester four, I am going to deal with the topic contemporary in, uh, paper in paper contemporary English literature, unveiling the past historical references in the Ministry of Culture Peoples. Uh, these are my academic details, table of contents. So first, to start with the biography of Arun Roy. Arun Roy was born in 1960 in Kerala, India. She studied architecture at Delhi Schools of Architecture and worked as a production designer. She lives in Delhi with her husband, filmmaker Pradeep Krishna. 
she has written two screenplays including in which any gives it to uh, those ones an electric moon uh, in one uh, in which any gives it those ones she uh, uh, plays a role as an actor and also uh, plays a role of her own homeland. Roy is a vocal activist and prolific essayist and a critic of uh, governmental policies and social norms. A non-fiction book, The Ghost of Living, which is published in 1999, critics the Indian government's handling of the Narmada Valley Dam project and new beer testing. Uh, she won uh, uh, many awards in literature uh, for uh, her novel, The Board of Small Things, and a Lenin Prize, uh, Lenin Prize for Culture and Freedom, recognized for her ad advocacy for culture and political freedom, uh, her second novel, The Ministry of Utmost Happiness, was both long-listed for the Man Booker Prize and finalist for the National Book uh, Critics uh, Awards in the U.S. Uh, her novel, Ministry of Utmost Happiness, The Ministry of Utmost Happiness, is the second novel by Indian writer Arun Dhatiru, uh, which is published in 2017. The Ministry of Utmost Happiness by Arun Dhatiru introduces readers to a rich tapestry of characters and themes set against the backdrop of contemporary India. The novel opens with the character of Manjun, a transgender woman who defi defies social norms with her strength and resilience. Uh, through this novel, Roy uh, challenges the readers to conform and uh, uncomfortable truths and taken with the complexities of contemporary India. Her blend of history and fiction offers a poignant reflection of uh, our times, capturing the essence of personal struggle within the broader canvas of political drama. The narrative style in the novel, Arundhati Roy employs a multi -lay layered and non linear narrative style in the Ministry of Utmost Happiness. The narrative unfolds through multiple perspectives and timelines, allowing the reader to piece together uh, an intricate connection between characters and events. She uses a poetic realism technique in her novel, also a, a letter and a news, a news of the time also uh, are described in the novel. Uh, and uh, this all, this all uh, incident and later poetic realism make this uh, narrative a uh, non-linear narrative. History and fiction. In the Ministry of Utmost Happiness, Arundhati Roy masterfully intervenes history and fiction to create a narrative that is both captivating and thought-provoking. Through the lens of personal narratives, Roy vividly portrays the social political landscape of India over two decades, effectively blurring the lines between uh, fact and fiction. In the article, historical discourse and literary writing, Hayden uh, uh, White discussed the relationship between history and literary writing in any form of poetry or, or fiction. Hayden imparts that both genres don't complement uh, each other because history deals with reality, when fiction roams in the world of image, imagination and figurative language. Many of author uses a uh, uh, historical fact in their fiction, like the chapter. James Wales and Virginia Wood also uses and uh, in a, we also studied the uh, Selma and Rusty's Midnight Children, which is also a historification. Uh, this describes the uh, writer's use of uh, history in their works and how they describe contemporary issues in their uh, novel uh, through the fiction uh, and uh, literature. So, in the novel Ministry of Utmost Happiness, Arundhati Roy first starts uh, with medieval history, medieval history, Changes Khan, the Mughal Emperor. The novel delves into medieval history by first connecting the protagonist Mulakat and his family lineage to the famous Mughal ruler Changes Khan, using this to explore the transition from ancient belief systems like uh, Shamanism to Islam and other religions in India over time. Genghis Khan was born of the world of uh, shamans of the Gobi Desert and uh, one of the most famous Mongolian warrior rulers who considered different tribes into a unified Mongolia and extend his empire across Asia, uh, Asia to the uh, Adriatic Sea. Uh, Genghis Khan 
he was a uh, follower of uh, sh shaman shamanism and after uh, that mughal uh, rule mughal rulers who are uh, uh, followers of islam in on uh, he is a follower of shia sect uh, shia sect of islam this transition underscores the evolution of social orders and religious hierarchies over time. Ali suggests that social and religious uh, beliefs have undergone changes, often uh, disregarding the natural world's blessing. He advocates for uh, redefining social construct, uh, constructs to adapt the ch uh, changing times, emphasizing the temporary of social orders and traits. In 13th century, Chinggis Khan faced many problems which are re relevant today. And through this portrayal of Chinggis Khan, uh, Arun Dhati Roy uh, also uh, gives some suggestions for uh, is uh, issues of contemporary time. Uh, next is early modern era. Uh, in this uh, very important symbol uh, in novel provides by Arun Dhati Hasan Sarmat Shahid Dada. The novel also provides a deep uh, uh, exploration of a Sufi saint Hazrat Sarmat Shahid, a Persian boy, Jewish merchant who embraced Islam but transit rigid religious uh, boundaries to become a mystic negative for uh, He He was born in 1990 in a Jewish family uh, in, uh, in Iran and he uh, learned Arabic language, Christianity, and Islamic theology and uh, other Islamic uh, sciences and after that he, uh, he became a Muslim and uh, after some time he uh, visited Sin and now uh, Sin is a part of Pakistan but uh, at that time it was a part of India and uh, uh, during that time he fell in love with a Hindu boy named Abhaychan and uh, so after that Sarma was accused of following a lifestyle which differed in opinion from the established religion Dogma for not speaking out the religious kalima of Islam in full in the court of Aurangzeb lost his life in execution in 1616. So this uh, incident, uh, incident also displayed the main theme of uh, the novel. Uh, it is a gay relationship of Hazrat Sarmat Shahi uh, portrayed the uh, main uh, message of Arundhati Roy's novels. Modern history uh, in the novel Emergency Period of India. In June 1975, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi declared the state of emergency in India under Article 352 of the Constitution, uh, suspending civil rights and imposing censorship uh, on newspapers. The emergency period saw a widespread abuse of power, including arbitrary arrest and forced uh, serialization, leading to a uh, contract. Uh, uh, centralization of, of authority and weakening of constitutional check and balance. Uh, some leaders like Jay Prakash Narayan uh, condemned the in emergency as a violation of democratic principles and urged uh, citizens to resist authoritarian actions. Through this uh, uh, portrayal of emergency, Arundhati Roy described the suffering of marginalized and poor people of India. Uh, next is 9-11 attack and the Gujarat massacre 2002. Uh, so these both incidents also describe the character growth and the life of character uh, uh, in that novel. Uh, the aftermath of uh, the 9-11 twin tower attack in the USA is depicted in the novel highlighting the development of anger and resentment particularly in the Middle East and Central Asia. And uh, uh, then Gujarat massacre. Uh, in the Gujarat Messenger of 2002 raised concerns about religious uh, polarization and government governance intentions with widespread violence fueled uh, by religious animosity. The impact of Gujarat riot was so intense on common people like Achu. People are being used by political and religious leaders for their own agenda, undermining the constitution of country. Incidents like partition on uh, religious ground uh, and under the horror of massacre, excuse of Kashmiri Pandits and a, a linear and lingering decision on the Rams and Bumi Babri Masjid lane title disputes, legal battle begin in 1855. This all incident resulted in a religious tension between the two major communities. So these are some incidents which also described in a 
uh, novel by uh, Sarna Rusty uh, uh, in Midnight Season. And uh, the next is Bhopal Gay's Tragedy and Thick Riots. The Bhopal Gay's Tragedy underscored the steep price civilization pays for unbridled industrial expansion. And in this uh, incident, uh, so many people uh, uh, have died, and more than the uh, so many workers, uh, so many workers uh, suffered in this tragedy. And through this incident, uh, Roy also uh, portrays the uh, condition of economic condition uh, of India, industrialization, and also environmental condition of India, and how these uh, incidents, uh, uh, how these incidents. Uh, uh, became a pay, painful for uh, 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 normal people or we can say ma marginalized people and uh, the Sikh riots of 1984 uh, after the death of Prime Minister Indira Gandhi in 1984 following the military operation at the Golden Temple uh, exacerbated communal tension and highlighted the vulnerability of democratic institutions. The aftermath of these events witnessed which provide riots and violence against Sikh communities across the country. This period underscored the critical need for effective governance, social harmony and respect for democratic principles uh, to safeguard the rights and security of all citizens. And uh, she also provided a big, brief history of Jammu and Kashmir and uh, uh, suffering of Kashmiri Pandits. The history of Jammu and Kashmir is marked by the plight of its people both in the um, midst of the geopolitical turmoil, particularly influenced by Pakistan's interventions in response to safeguarding the Kashmir Valley and its, its in, uh, inhabitants. Kashmiris found themselves navigating the demands of militants and Indian security forces leading to the suppression of their fundamental rights and immense threats. Uh, this issue uh, is going on uh, since the partition of India and so many people are uh, suffered because of this issue. The king of uh, Maharaja Hari Singh, uh, Hari Singh, the decision uh, is, uh, no, uh, is not a kept, uh, not a capture for the Kashmir and uh, because of this uh, so many people suffered uh, and so many people lost their lives also and uh, in, in this uh, so many Kashmiri Pandits are also su suffered in, uh, in these incidents. So these all are historical incidents which are portrayed by Arundhati Roy in her, uh, in her novel. So in conclusion, we can say that all the historical elements which are provided in, in the novel uh, also, dip uh, also portray the characters, life characters, both in the novel and uh, uh, these all uh, these all historical incidents uh, suggest the uh, some some uh, suggestion for contemporary issues and uh, how the people of India marginalized people and some uh, people like uh, third gender people or poor people how they face uh, troubles in our society through this all uh, fragmented narration uh, fragmented narration Arundhati Roy. Uh, skillfully portrayed the uh, suffering of the common people of India. So, uh, these Arundhati Roy's novels not only entertain but also educates, offering valuable lessons for a more inclusive and equitable future for India. Uh, these are my references. Thanks. Uh, now, I move on to the question. In Sia, uh, my question is that as reader, we often bring our understanding, our own understanding of history to the book we read. So, how do you think Arundhati Roy's use of historical references in the novel *The Minister of Utmost Happiness* challenges or adds to the adds to our readers' preconceived notion of Indian history and society? Like, as we readers tries to bring the memory of our about history to the books and literature we read. 
So how do you think this novel, the Ministry of Utmost Happiness, tries to challenge our preconceived ideas about history or adds to that or challenges it? So uh, history which are uh, saved in our memory and we write it in a literature or in books. Uh, so uh, these are history, these are not a factual history but it's a fiction. So in Arundhati Roy, uh, these uh, events are real but though it, uh, this, uh, for uh, more information we have to uh, check it out and for, uh, for other information uh, also. So we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, totally rely on these uh, historical facts in the novel. Uh, in Syria, how does Arunjati Roy use a fiction to critique and comment on a real world political and social issue in India? So how does Arunjati Roy use fiction? Uh, she used the fiction to critique and comment uh, on uh, our contemporary India. Uh, uh, she also portrayed the modern uh, modern history of us, like the emergency period, Gujarat riots, Sikh riots, and also issue of Jammu and Kashmir. So uh, she skillfully portrayed all these issues in the novel, and through this uh, historical fact, uh, she uses the fiction in her work. And through this, uh, she criti uh, she uh, criticized our contemporary India and uh, how uh, people of uh, marginalized com community face trouble in India. So she, uh, she uh, skillfully portrayed all this. Thank you. Can I start? Uh, hello everyone, my name is Mansi Mujuri and the first day of presentation. Uh, I will discuss about the consume as a plant uh, Here is my personal information. Uh, first we are discuss about the introduction for uh, introduction of this novel. Arunta Piroi, the Booker Prize winner author of the book God of Small Things, uh, wrote the Ministry of Atmos Happiness, uh, her second fictional uh, 20 years after her debut with the former. The Ministry of Atmos Happiness is an uh, aging, uh, aging story and the uh, decisive uh, demonstration. Uh, one follows Anju, a transgender transgender struggling to make a life for herself in a daily. Uh, the world she uh, conjures is the offer of brutal. Uh, psychoanalysis uh, freedom. Freudian theory is uh, de uh, deal, with, uh, deal with in this moment. The story begins and end in the graveyard. It, pro uh, it processes the strong voice of the LGBT community in modern India. The story speaks about gender discrimination, uh, religious difference, uh, differences, and the uh, political uh, domination that uh, encourages uh, associations of uh, innocent people. The victims of, are uh, named as uh, assume, assume and they are murdered from the name of law. The opening line of, of the Ministry of Utmost Happiness show how Roy has uh, genuinely worries about uh, sentiments and impact materials. Uh, impact materials of the heart in the 
in her uh, portrayals of uh, biotry, violence and uh, disgraceful love of uh, regard, regard for uh, humanity. She, she realistically depicted joy in her saddest place. Uh, now we are saying about, uh, discuss about author. Arunthati Roy, uh, born in 1961 in Meghali, to a Hindu, Hindu father and Christian mother. She is a versatile figure known for her role as an author, screen, uh, screenwriter, activist, actor, and one-time one uh, aerobics uh, in, uh, instructor. Her works involve the harsh reality of her society. She never show any hesitation either to work to or speak on any uh, uh, financial issue. Uh, as a writer, she never so choose to write a fantasy, fairy tale, or uh, romance, but she uh, pre prefer to depict the suffering of uh, mankind. Uh, yeah. In this novel, the Ministry of Utmost Happiness, uh, she also describes uh, about the politics, uh, the uh, social struggle uh, faced by uh, uh, Anju. Uh, Anju. Uh, uh, Roy, I uh, have also involved in various uh, protests such as uh, against uh, Sardar so, uh, their project uh, which took away homes for, of uh, the poor, uh, poor people. Uh, she is also against, uh, build, against the building of Nava uh, She gained global uh, recognition with her uh, award winning uh, novel, The Court of Small Things, uh, which won the main Booker Prize and uh, been translated into 42 languages. Despite the controversies, the novel is considered the modern classic. In 2017, Roy released her second fictional book, The Ministry of Utmost Happiness, set in Delhi and Kashmir, uh, covering the uh, decades of uh, modern Indian history. The novel, like its uh, uh, predecessors, uh, uh, employs uh, Lawyer read across uh, in depict the uh, complexity of Indian politics and society. Uh, now we are discussing about uh, transgender as a term. The word transgender or trans is an umbrella term, a term for people whose gender identity is, identity is difficult from the sex assigned, assigned to as a birth, uh, assigned uh, as at birth. Uh, although the word transgender and our modern uh, definition of this only come into use of the late 20th century, uh, people who would fit under this definition have existence in every person throughout record history. The trans uh, community is uh, increasingly uh, diverse. Uh, some trans people idea identify as a trans male or trans woman, while others may describe themselves as a non binary uh, gender uh, uh, and uh, other identities that uh, reflected their personality experience. Uh, some of uh, us take uh, uh, harmonious or, or have surg surgery as a part of their uh, transition. Transition, while other may change our uh, pronouns of or appearance. The very concept of uh, hijra and uh, other transgender is not a uh, new for our India. In our mythology and uh, our history, we can see a transgender community. Uh, we can see a transgender community in a community like uh, Hijra, uh, Portis, Aravanis, uh, Jogapas, uh, Shiv Shakti, it's uh, in a novel well, when uh, Anju Borna is of the uh, that time we can see uh, her mother's reaction. Uh, reaction that uh, described Arunthati Roy is very well described. Like, uh, it, uh, is it possible for mother to be a terrible of her own baby? Jahangana uh, Begum goes. Her first reaction was to feel her heart uh, constrict, uh, constricts and her bones turn to age. Her second reaction was to take another, another look to make sure she was not wasted. Her third reaction was to recoil from the, what she was uh, created while her uh, balls convulsed uh, uh, in a thin stream of uh, sheet uh, run down her legs. Uh, here we can see some other reaction uh, in a fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh reaction. Uh, 
In a sneva reaction, uh, was to lie down next to Akta and rest like a god of the Christian. Uh, Christian is the, the after he had made heaven and earth, expect that uh, it is a fair case. He released after making the sins of the of the world he had he had created. Uh, whatever Jahangana become uh, wasted after what she created has uh, spam them uh, spam her sins in the world. Uh, it uh, it wasn't uh, real Mojana. After all uh, she told herself. Uh, when uh, Jahangana Begum uh, see them all things, he was not uh, saying her husband about about the uh, about this, but uh, uh, but after some time, time her husband know this. Uh, in a in a childhood, uh, Anju faced a social unacceptability in her uh, life from her childhood when old age Anju's parents uh, they tried their best to treat her, but uh, they tried not to so. In her childhood, she was uh, admitted to a music school. Uh, she was an intelligent student and uh, performed her well in that school. Uh, but when her class fellows come to know that she was a transgender, uh, they started uh, teasing her. He is, a, he is a she, he is not a, a he or a she. He is a he uh, and a she. She, he, she, he, he. Uh, at least Anju was forced to leave the school and stay at home all day, uh, all day, uh, all day. Uh, during that time, uh, one day when Aftab saw, Aftab saw someone who took uh, all his uh, attention, uh, attention, when he sit in a balcony of her house, uh, he was uh, seeing one uh, lady a slim shaped woman wearing bright lipstick, a gold high heels, and a wore a golden satin silver uh, whereby uh, buying bangles and a chili kebab. Uh, uh, this woman is a, a transgender woman. Uh, here is her opinions of this. Uh, here around the divide is the opinions of a transgender woman, like a uh, uh, bright hair, bright lipstick, a uh, golden high heel and uh, light colored uh, clothes. Uh, when Aftab uh, see these old things, uh, he felt something that uh, made him follow her. Uh, she felt like uh, what to be free and uh, wanted to, to be like her. Uh, she wanted to dress, walk and behave uh, like her free, uh, freely. Because uh, Anjum, in the inner side of Anjum, he, he imagined herself as a uh, 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 as a trans woman and uh, bearing these all things, uh, medical encounters. Uh, it when uh, Anjum's uh, parents know these all things, uh, he decided to go uh, doctor uh, doctor for uh, some surgery. Uh, here, here this time her uh, parents, uh, her mother say say this dialogue. Uh, it took him a while to uh, get over. Over the initial show, times had changed. He said uh, this was a modern hair. He was sure that a very sim simple medical solution to their son's problem. Uh, her father and her parents are worried about, uh, worried about her son. So he decided to go uh, medical and uh, change her. Uh, change her and uh, go to medical and uh, uh, Take some uh, surgery to uh, her child was a normal, behave like a normal. Uh, uh, when uh, Anju, um, when uh, Anju was going to a uh, Jannat guest house uh, in the live, living to your transgender. Uh, community uh, during that time, Anjum also wanted to feel like a normal woman face. Uh, then she went to a doctor and chose to do surgery and add her female for uh, hormones. Uh, but during that time, uh, her operation has not uh, successfully uh, done. Uh, and after that, he, they have no money to go for uh, other operations. Um, 
hijrah the house of hijrah uh, when when Anshum see a lady in uh, wish to go uh, live with uh, there uh, here he lives with a Fakla house he uh, he Fakla was called Fakla Ustad Kusum B said because it was a uh, very special people blessed people come with their dream that could uh, not be realized in a dunya in a Fakla holy souls trapped in uh, in in the wrong body uh, was uh, liberated. Anjum decided to leave her house and uh, move to the Fabla of or house of dream, where other transgender lives and work mostly as a special counter count uh, house of Ch Channa. Uh, once uh, once again when uh, Anjum finally moved from Fabla to the graveyard, it makes her passage to yet another one. Uh, she shared her uh, uh, brightening colors custom, uh, costume and dressed herself in a pattern. Uh, her adopted fe uh, femininity gave uh, way to her dreaded uh, uh, masculine uh, feature. Now we are discussed about the uh, Hijra community. Uh, another community on which uh, Roy's novel focuses for, uh, for its first uh, Sixth, sixth chapter, uh, Indian Hijra, a name that refers to uh, gay or transgender men uh, who uh, cross dress, dress and have a surgery or a, uh, or a hormone treatment to live as a woman and which can also uh, encompass a border, uh, border range of non uh, uh, hegemonic team uh, markers. markers. Uh, as a part of a trans community, they are still marginalized, marginalized uh, and subjected to, to forms of social injustice and obstructed to relation to uh, wide uh, Hindu Muslim society. Uh, in a space of uh, double marginalized uh, uh, alternative community, not the more uh, informative uh, family house or workplace, but the uh, ambiguous self professional Fashioning sisterhood of the Fabla. Uh, social responses. Uh, Roy shows that India is not a, a utopia for uh, Hijra. Rather, they are always abundance from all the social rituals. India has a long established tra uh, tradition of caste with specifically uh, boundaries of uh, purity and uh, pollution between community. Uh, community. Uh, in the Community. Uh, Roy mentioned that uh, they uh, dis uh, descended or ordinary, one of ordinary people's celebration, wedding, weddings, birth, house warming, house warming uh, ceremonies, dancing, singing uh, in their wild, grating voice, offering their, their blessing and uh, treatering to embrace, embrace the most and reign in an occasion with a uh, course and a display of uh, unthinkable uh, option of sanctity unless they are paid a tree. Another is, uh, incident, in, instance of the ill treatment uh, in, with, in that which Anjum has to face during Gujarat rights. After the uh, Gujarat incident uh, where her old companion is uh, brutally killed by the mobs in a uh, spite of her attempt to save him, the mob is about to kill her but her life is there there is someone in the mob opinion that killing of Israel is a bad woman, uh, an upshopan. Uh, she is uh, she is abused in a uh, human life for being a Israel and even being a, even being a, a Muslim Israel. Uh, uh, for her transgender, uh, it is very very important to twist for identity. Uh, gender is. Uh, uh, gender is a cultural con construct, construct as a uh, Michael Foucault argued that uh, sexuality is not a na natural feature or a fact of, of human life, but a, a construction category of experience uh, which has, has a historical, social and cultural rather than biological uh, origins. Uh, in this uh, novel, Roy portrayed a uh, polarization of gender in this regarding the identity of Israel. 
in this novel, in a novel, other transgender woman, Ustad Kulsumbi, is a, one of the elder member of the Fakka. Yeah. She was a very proud of being a Hijra. He always a retired story from uh, Asian history of uh, India to make uh, their younger generation aware about the position they held before the colony. Uh, in our India, Hijra is a marginalized, marginalized group. Uh, in this novel, we can also see that uh, uh, Anjumian or uh, her other, fell, uh, other trans people are uh, marginalized, marginalized uh, in uh, India. Uh, uh, in uh, our government, are also make some uh, rights for uh, transgender people, like a transgender persons uh, act. Of, Act under uh, section 18 of this act, it is legal for any person to sexual abuse any transgender person. Uh, uh, government also make a rules of uh, Indian Penal Code and uh, preve prevention of sexual harassment at the uh, place. But, uh, in our India, we can in our India transgender people are uh, living with a very uh, in a transgender people, other people are uh, harassed, sexual harassment and uh, harassment also in the uh, workplace. Uh, workplace. Uh, the act also follows for the construction of a national counseling for transgender people. The, the national counseling has been uh, tasked with uh, uh, advising the uh, central government of the formulation of politics, programs, uh, legis legislation, and a project for a transgender people, and uh, also other things. Uh, in a conclusion, uh, Anjum's character portrayal is a transgender character in the Ministry of Utmost Happiness, offering a uh, uh, poison meant exploration of, of identity and uh, real, uh, realization. Uh, though her journey and her uh, challenges the so, uh, social norms and prejudice. Uh, overall, the, her story serves as a powerful reminder of the inherent uh, dignity, dignity and worth worth of uh, every individual uh, regardless of gender identity. Uh, here is my reference and thank you. Now you can ask the question. Uh, Manji, how do uh, other transgender individuals assist uh, in her life. In this novel, we can uh, in this novel we can see other uh, transgender character uh, uh, who lives in a Kafka with her with her Anju. Uh, in a Kafka Anju experience are different things. Uh, so other uh, other transgender people are uh, helping him to experience a different thing and also uh, also live uh, and uh, how to uh, how to live in this society with our uh, real identity these all things uh, these all things uh, learn from other transgender uh, people How does Anjum's character challenges readers uh, to rethink their perception and biases toward a uh, transgender community? Uh, when Anjum was uh, born in the Afta, uh, during that time, her mother, uh, her mother reaction was uh, different. We can see in uh, my previous slide. So, yeah, but after that, sometime her mother was uh, love. Uh, her mother loved her child, uh, whatever he is a uh, transgender or a uh, male or woman. Uh, woman. Uh, in a novel, we can see a different accident. Uh, Anjum's life. Uh, but after reading this novel, uh, people are understand uh, how to behave with her trans 
gender trans uh, gender because they are also uh, also uh, uh, transgender are also uh, human so we can behave with her in a good manner thank you Okay, Hello everyone, my name is Tavi Vijani and today I am going to present on a uh, paper contemporary liter English literature uh, on the topic Corruption in Indian Society, a Revolution 2020 Perspective. This is my academic information. This is the table of content and the brief introduction of Chetan Bhagat. Uh, Chetan Bhagat is an Indian author, columnist, and a YouTuber. And uh, uh, he uh, writes also a best, best selling novels, including One Night at the Call Center, The Three Mistakes of My Life, and Two States, uh, Revolution 2020, Half, Half Girlfriend, and The Girl in uh, room, room Number 105. Uh, his work often explores themes such as love, friendship, ambition, social norms, and uh, cultural clashes, uh, often a blend of romance, drama, humor, and social uh, commentary. Uh, he is also a col columnist, uh, screenwriter, and a, a motivational speaker. He writes for, for uh, leading news, newspaper and magazines, and addressing a wide range of social social, political, and cultural issues. Bhagat's writing style is known for the, his uh, simplicity, uh, accessibility, accessibility, and ability to connect with a diverse audience and making him one of the most influential uh, voices, uh, voices in contemporary Indian literature. Uh, about the novel Revolution 2020, uh, Revolution 2020 published in uh, uh, 2011 and it is a set in the backdrop of Varanasi, the city of northern India and the novel uh, revolves around the uh, lives of three main characters Gopal, Raghav and Akhti uh, whose aspirants uh, of dream and ambitions interact uh, amidst Amid the backdrop of corruption, education, and love, these are the main themes of this novel: love, corruption, and amb ambition. Uh, in the first character, Gopal is a young man from a lower middle class family who dreams of becoming rich and successful to achieve his goals, and he becomes uh, embroiled in corrupt. Uh, in corrupt and including manipulating the education education system 
interest uh, in the interest exam uh, in our government. Uh, these are some examples of corruption in Indian education. The first one is the movie uh, Arakshan. Uh, in the in the in this movie, uh, the character of Doctor Anand, who is the principal of STM College, and he fights to uh, abide by the OBC reservation in the Supreme Court, and uh, it is the uh, 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 fight in the reservation system. Uh, the second movie is a Super 30 movie. Uh, in the, in this movie, uh, uh, Anand Kumar was the uh, main character uh, who, who, who teach uh, the who is the math mathematician, ma mathematician and who teach the student. Uh, and uh, in this movie, we find the famous dialogue. Raja ka beta Raja nahi banega, Raja bahi banega jo hukdar hoga uh, and he also added that utho, padho, lado, bado or hukdar bano because uh, the son of a king will not necessarily become a king the one who is deserving will become the king uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, this is the true leadership or success uh, should be on through by hard work and uh, and the merit of uh, her own, but not by through family connection or wealth or by taking and giving rights. Uh, the third example is from uh, uh, the corruption in medical education in need, the corruption and uh, malpractice in uh, medical colleges where seats are alleged, allegedly being sold on un achieving students who did not qualify for admission based on merit. The FBS seats are sold between 12 lakh to 40 lakh rupees by two private colleges in general. The scam get bigger as the postgraduate uh, in medical field that are necess necessary for a successful career. career and the price for a post-graduation seat is radiology in most leading private colleges across the country is 2 crore rupees while in cardiology, gynecology and orthopedics are priced around rupees 1.5 crore. Uh, corruption in politics. The novel uh, portrays how politics like Shuklaji are involved in corrupt, uh, corrupt practice like uh, misusing funds and uh, meant for project like uh, Ganga, uh, Ganga River Cleaning, uh, cleaning uh, initi Initiative to uh, instead building uh, in a private educational system for personal profit. Uh, politics and builders are shown getting into uh, shady deals to convert uh, agricultural land and uh, illegally into land for educational institutes institutes by bringing authorities and circumventing uh, uh, regulations. Uh, the novel Revolution 2020 shows how poli uh, politicians have ties with newspaper uh, companies and offering them advertisement in exchanging for positive coverage and uh, 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 suppressing a uh, report of their current activity, the protagonist Raghav and the idealistic journalist uh, who is a journalist face harassment from politicians for trying to expose corruption of Shuklaji and uh, he scan uh, scandals throughout uh, his reporting in his newspaper Revolution 2020. Emily Shuklaji, Shuklaji is the uh, representative of those dark things in the section of uh, narration like him uh, the big guns uh, always uh, deceive the society in the name of the uh, social benefit. The novel we see that Emelin start establishing a new college name Ganga Technology in a no-fly zone it is a 
completely against the contemporary law to use an agricultural land for establishing establishing any edu 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 educational institute but it is a game for chess to the mla for the reason that he has the cm uh, mla in his uh, the cm chief minister in his hand nothing will be a problem uh, before him the mla says to go past that show her show her mother show her mother your car and money don't take dowry uh, even even if the daughter does not agree uh, the mother will uh, here is the life is the emotional corruption we find in the novel these are some examples in uh, of uh, corruption in indian politics uh, we find that uh, the journalist who uh resigned for resigned in the news channel uh for the quality by the uh, political pressure uh one is the nikhil bakle from tv9 marathi a popular television channel and uh, uh he is also a cancer against the his uh, show for the political pressure the cancellation of bagle show uh, maharashtra Mar Ma maharathi uh it is the uh, uh, this show was cancelled by him because of uh, pressuring from the ruling political party uh, and uh, suggest attempt to uh, suppress uh, this dissenting voices and control the narrative uh, presented uh, presented in, in the media uh, uh in the in our indian politics we find uh, many other uh, journalists like uh, ravish kumar uh, shekhar gupta and barkhada who are also uh, resigned uh, the, uh, the their news channel uh, uh, because of the uh, political pressure in the conclusion uh, revolution 2020 by chetan bhagat highlights the uh, pervasive uh, corruption in india and in the governance business and society and uh, and also in the education system and also in, also in the uh, politics party uh, throughout the story of raghav and uh, also the story of gopal uh, uh, the raghav is the journalist and uh, fighting against corruption and uh, the gopal is the uh, one who uh, who and support uh, the mla uh, shukla ji and uh, the part of uh, and being part of correct corruption and uh, by this novel bhagat uh, chetan bhagat emphasizes the urgent need for comprehensive uh, reforms to uh, promote uh, transparency uh, accountability and ethics uh, in the, the corruption in education and politics both are the telling the story of gopal and amela shukla ji in the revolution 2020 and uh, these are the resources and politician शुक्ला जी इज uh is a uh, made a uh, ganga technology a uh, college for their uh, personal benefit and uh, uh, and for uh, the uh, and for the personal earning by by the uh, uh, corruption Uh, nirali how does the corruption in the education system uh, depict in revolution 2020 reflect the real life challenges faced by students and institutions in india uh, 
we find uh, corruption in education in revolution 2020 by the uh, corruption in uh, uh, passing the exam and taking the bribe uh, by the by the who are the uh, lead, leading the uh, gov governance and the colleges uh, they are taking bribe and uh, and uh, uh, selling the admission uh, uh, enter admissions and uh, also uh, favoritism and the uh, and the institutes uh, uh, their their students uh, uh, cannot get any opportunities uh, uh, by the uh, on. Uh, hello everyone, uh, myself I am uh, and uh, today is the first day of the
Uh, hello everyone, uh, myself Ayal Bambarian and uh, today is the first day of the presentation on the uh, paper number 207, Contemporary English Literature. Uh, in today's presentation, uh, I am dealing with uh, a topic, uh, Julian Banks' The Only Story uh, as a Memory Narrative. Uh, these are the personal details and the academic details. Uh, these are the poems uh, which will I am going to discuss. Uh, first is about the uh, writer or author Julian Banks. Uh, Julian Patrick Banks is an English uh, writer and he also wrote uh, novel short stories and essays. Uh, born in 1946 in uh, England and uh, died in 2008. Uh, notable works, uh, Sense of an Ending, The Only Story, uh, Man in the Red Court, The Noise of Time, Keeping an Eye Open, Levels of Life, and many others. Uh, Barnes received uh, numerous awards and honors for his writing, most recently. The David Cohen Prize for Literature in 2011, the 2011 Man Booker Prize, the 2021 uh, Jerusalem Prize, and the uh, 2021 uh, Yesnaya Poliana uh, Bernard Prize. Literary Award. Also in 2011, he was awarded the Jean Bernard Prize, so named in memory of the great specialist in. Uh, hematology who was a member of the French Academy and chair of the Academy of Medicine. The only story, uh, the only story is a novel written by uh, Julian Barnes, uh, published in 2018, uh, divided into three parts. A novel explored the theme of love, memory, and past. Uh, Julian Barnes selects Samuel Johnson's definition of the novel as the epigraph for the only story, a small tale generally of love. So it is a, a novel which is uh, totally based on a, a theme of love, memory, and past. Barnes' uh, latest novel is narrated by an older man, a puzzling over a meaning of existence. The novel traces the life of Paul Roberts, uh, who has a young uh, university student become involved with an older married woman named Susan McLeod. Uh, their relationship and with Susan descent into uh, alcoholism and dementia, leading Paul to embark on endless uh, foreign travels throughout a Paul questions the reality of his own narration and memories. Uh, like his main book of winning 2011 novel, The Sense of an Ending, and indeed his 2018 uh, memoir, Nothing to be Frightened for, uh, Julian Barnes' latest novel is narrated by an older man puzzling over the meaning of existence. Uh, I can't remember what, uh, when or where the first kiss, who made the first move, or uh, whether it was both at the same time. And uh, whatever, whatever perhaps it was, not so much move as a drift. The only story comes from its psychological acuity, especially about how we remember. In Paul's narrative, experience uh, deconstruct themselves and uh, personal personalities decay in a realistically uh, convincing way. So the, the no, uh, story of this novel is totally based on remembering the past, remembering the incidents uh, which uh, Paul faced during his uh, 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 undergraduation uh, period of time. Uh, about uh, the only story as a narrative memory, uh, we all know the uh, narrative uh, technique and uh, also memory. So memory is totally uh, connected with the brain and uh, uh, it is a, a part of uh, uh, remembering the uh, uh, information and uh, uh, any, any other things. So the uh, only story is uh, totally based on uh, remembering the information or incident. So it is called the 
narrative memory in the only story. The issues of temporal point of view or uh, retrospect is key. Uh, a retrospect means uh, a looking back on uh, or a thinking about a uh, uh, past event. So uh, it is the a uh, key point of this novel. Uh, you understand? I hope that I am telling you everything as I remember it. I never kept a diary, and most of the participants in my story, my story, my life. Are either dead, dead, or far dispersed. Uh, memory short and shift according to the demands made on it by a uh, remember. So the poll also uh, tell that uh, I am uh, I am not. Uh, I can't. Uh, I don't know what happened, but I am uh, remembering the memory. Uh, Julian Barnes' novel, the only story, can be read uh, as a monograph on the complications of novel. Uh, monograph uh, means uh, uh, it is a study of work of uh, uh, any particular author. So it is the uh, we can say that it is a, a, a novel based on uh, Julian Barnes' life. Also, uh, memory short and shift according to the demands. So it is all about memory narrative. Uh, in this part, a poll share with us not only what he experienced but what he thinks about his experience. Uh, memory is also connected with uh, uh, psychology, as uh, Dipesh Chakravarti mentioned in uh, uh, his book Habitations of uh, Modernity Essays in the Way of Subaltern Studies. So, the uh, memory is also connected with uh, uh, psychology and uh, 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 in this novel, the uh, Suzanne uh, faced the uh, drama. Uh, for example, in this dialogue, I had an uncle, Uncle Hum. For Humphrey, I used to go and stay with him and Aunt Florence after my mother died. So I would have been 11, 12. Uh, here, uh, uh, Suzanne faced the uh, problem in the childhood. And Roma uh, of uh, uh, memory in uh, psychology. Uh, as I mentioned, that uh, memory is connected with the uh, uh, brain. So, and brain is also connected with uh, psychological uh, behavior and uh, information uh, as and when we discuss or just refer to memory as a field for cognitive studies in psychology some uh, uh, juggle non psychologists such as uh, sir sigmund freud sir carl jung uh, jean pigard sir jacobs lecon sir william james uh, who gave their major portion of uh, neural nerves in the pursuit of human behavior studies. In his uh, groundbreaking book titled as the uh, Interpretation of Dreams, Freud makes a critical case for a memory in context of its relation with dreams and the functioning methods of human mind. Uh, uh, Sigmund Freud said about, said about memory that uh, the entire memory of the dream is uh, open to an objection calculated to uh, depress it, its uh, value uh, very markedly in uh, omits much from the dream does not falsify what it uh, retains. The perception that come to us leave a trust in our psyche, a, a part sir, which we may all call a memory trust. So, uh, uh, Sigmund Freud said that uh, uh, whatever we uh, remember or uh, whatever we try to recall, it is uh, depends on uh, our uh, dream or uh, what uh, we uh, what we uh, seen uh, in the past, and uh, uh, that will come uh, in our uh, present uh, life. Uh, memory in a narratology. Uh, 
memory and narrative are technical terms in the academic field of psychology, linguistic, communication history, and literary studies. Uh, with a variety of definition in each field, in addition to their non technical use, both narrative and memory are. Are constructed so the narr uh, uh, narrative technique uh, and memory both are interconnected. Uh, conclusion uh, uh, Thus, we can say that uh, the purpose of bringing memory narrative into literary authorship can be uh, to form the uh, rigidly uh, conservative minds of the readers. And, uh, uh, spectacles into a doubting and questioning minds which can probe for truth <clears throat> rather than uh, relying on a just what comes as a scared ancient scripture or a, a holy text. <clears throat> for example, uh, we can say uh, we can take example from the uh, ancient Vedic uh, uh, knowledge system where there is the base. Uh, Two division of the scriptures. One part is a uh, constitute of a shunti, uh, listen or knowledge like Vedas, various another constitution, it's part by a uh, smriti, smriti means memory or a recollected teaching uh, compiled into scriptures such as Puran. So uh, we can in the ancient time, uh, there is a oral tradition of the uh, telling of a uh, story or a um, any kind of uh, uh, information. Uh, so we cannot totally uh, rely on uh, their, uh, we cannot totally rely on their narration and narrator. Uh, as the uh, statement language bears within itself the <coughs> necessity of its own critique you know, from the base of a deconstruction concept originated by Sir Chekos Derrida. It can be taken to a uh, through the text we come across in order to get clear perspective as uh, we all know that the uh, <coughs> Sir Jacob Derrida said that deconstruction is uh, uh, very important for any uh, any kind of uh, any uh, kind of uh, deconstruction is very important for anything so we can also uh, question about the uh, uh, narration and narrator also of any uh, or th uh, any religious book or any other things also. Thank you. These are the references. Now I am open for the question. Payal, uh, why do we question the accuracy of old Robert's memory? Why do we question the accuracy of old Robert's memory? Uh, as I mentioned that uh, uh, old Robert, uh, uh, Robert also says that uh, I am remembering, uh, I am telling you as I remain remembering. So uh, he he uh, he himself not sure that uh, I am uh, telling the truth or not. So we can clearly say that it is not a, a true memory. We can question. Uh, Payal, what role does memory study play in contemporary time? And why it is important or not? Uh, in our contemporary terms, and uh, what is why it is important? Um, uh, if we want to connect memory study uh, in a uh, contemporary times, uh, we cannot uh, totally rely on uh, any. Uh, books or uh, religious or anything we, uh, we also know that the now technology is emerged and uh, people don't uh, rely on the uh, books 
so we can uh, we can uh, we can uh, net technology interconnected uh, in memory study so I'm sorry. Am I audible? So, hello everyone. Uh, so, in a way, this is the second presentation in our semester four from the paper number Contemporary English Literature or 20th Century English Literature. And for this, I choose the topic Exploring the Narrative Style of Amitabh Ghosh's Gun uh, Here are my personal information and these are some the ideas or question which uh, I want to address in presentation or are addressed. Uh, first is like does the use of non linear storytelling techniques in the novel Gun Island have any impact on the story? Uh, second is using a first person narrative voice enough for the reader to understand the main idea or point of the story and other is do the different way of uh, telling the story or narrating the story make this novel different? Uh, with, uh, like first start with the, what are some narrative techniques uh, which, uh, which, are, uh, which are existing uh, throughout literary history. Many writers uh, have changed uh, challenge to linear or uh, linear technique or chronological storytelling and make it in non-linearity. Uh, these are some examples like Arabian Nights Tales, uh, then uh, Bio Wolf, uh, Presentation, It's Hero's Life in Non-Chronological Way, uh, Modernist Novelist, uh, Modern Novelist like Red Virgin Out and William, William Faulkner also challenge it. Uh, these examples highlights how writers have, uh, have embraced non-linear narrative structure that debated from traditional linear style. Uh, Non-linear narratives purposefully disrupt chronological order. Why it is disrupt chronological order or, or why it is important? So this forces, this non-linear technique forces the audience to actively engage with the story or concentrate in it. Uh, uh, concentrate on unraveling the plot line and draw their own conclusion about the meaning or significance of portrayed events. The unpredictability and need for active interpretation make non-linear narratives a powerful story reading. Now, let's start with the uh, information about the writer of the Gun Island. Uh, is Amitabh Ghosh, who was born uh, in 1956, dominated for the Man Booker Prize for his work, Sea of Topis. Uh, also for Man Asia, literary prize in 2011 for River of Smoke. Uh, he was awarded with the Gyanpit Award in 2018. He pursued his uh, higher education at the University of Oxford and earned PhD in Social Anthropology. Uh, his debut novel was Circle of Reason. He was also known for some of the works like Dancing in Cambodia at Large in Burma, uh, the Circle of Reason in Ghana. Uh, shows that uh, uh, this is introduction from the original text, uh, which gave the idea or uh, 
a main idea that uh, what is in this novel uh, about the Gone Island, uh, published in uh, 2019, narration style normally in first person, John Dye's novel, Clive Fine, or history of fiction, setting in Kolkata, India, Sundarbans, uh, and Los Angeles, and Paris. The novel is divided particularly in two parts. First one is titled The Gun Merchant, and second is part when this uh, the two uh, two part is divided also with the various chapters uh, key characters in the novel can be seen dinana piyali chinta nirima tipu rafi lubna khala chiza etc now let's start the uh, main topic of this presentation uh, i describe narration through various various ways or ideas first is narration through the point of view or first person narrative technique so in gun i most i close with the first person narrative technique uh, this technique novel is predominantly told from perspective of various characters as uh, also we we see that the narration is from various uh, person and the chapter name has a, a different different person like Chinta, then Rafi, uh, sorry, uh, Rafi, Tipu, like that. This consistence, consistency of use of first person narration allows readers to gain an intimate understanding of the story through the eyes of different characters, but at the same time, uh, it is from the first person narrative, uh, the, uh, the reality or uh, authenticity can be questioned because it, uh, the, uh, the person say what they feel about it. So additionally, the story does not follow straight chronological order instead of events happening one after another. The novel jumps back and forth in time and place also as it is saying uh, historical fiction. It goes in past uh, uh, myth or a present, coming present as well. So this non-linear structure reflects the complex web of stories and legends that are central to the novel's themes. By not following a simple linear path, readers can better explore deeper layer of meaning in the book. So non-linearity has its own importance, which make this uh, make this gun island or the novel uh, important in its own way. So here is an example uh, from the book uh, for the first person narrative. The Adin says that I hesitated. I don't know that I have the time to say I'm heading back to New York very soon. Uh, second way of narration uh, is a narration through chapters and characters. Like, uh, it is very interesting to see that how a ghost use chapters and characters perspective to narrate this story. Normally, uh, normally book has so many chapters and various ideas about it. But here in Gun Island, the story is divided or told from person to person or from chapter to chapter with characters. So additionally, the chapter title themselves are intriguing. Uh, titles like wildfires, vines, uh, sightings, and the storm also uh, says uh, uh, say the direct reference, uh, reference of elements of nature. This is an interesting technique by Bush that intervene the natural world into the narrative itself with the title of the chapters. Uh, through these chapters, the title, character focused narratives, Bush, uh, Bush skillfully connects the human stories and experience uh, to the force of nature that surrounding them. Uh, this narrative style highlights the instincts uh, link between sorry, the characters' lives and the natural environment they inhabit. Uh, that also says that uh, this technique creates narrative that is not only about characters' personal journey, but they also connect uh, their own life with uh, the myth, history, and also nature as well. So, uh, following th uh, this, uh, let us see narration through location and uh, nature. So the novel addresses the quest, uh, quest of the a rare book dealer from New York who travels to the Sundarbans in West Bengal to unravel the mystery of 17th century merchant uh, by the mythical snake uh, goddess Mansadhyani. Uh, here I try to make a Google map for, for these all, uh, all places like Brooklyn to Kolkata to Sundarban to Los Angeles to Paris. So it is like this that how uh, and from where to where our uh, protagonist travel. So from Brooklyn to, uh, to he, uh, he goes to Calcutta, his uh, his own place on the present, uh, then he goes to Sundarban mangrove forest and after that uh, he goes to Los Angeles and after from Los Angeles he goes to Paris. So here uh, it is like going from here to there. I also try to do this uh, or Telling that how he narrates the story through these uh, whole places. Yeah. So, uh, Brooklyn, Kolkata, Sundarbans. Uh, 
The narrative moves across location like valleys and swing urbans, both threatened by rising sea levels or high, high tide or low tide like that. Level due to global warming, the novel highlights the plight of refugees and migrant people also. In addition to using a real places like this valleys and Los Angeles, we also use some fictional, fictional lands uh, which is like Gun uh, Island represent valleys. Land of kerchiefs means Rumalitesh in Bengali, island of change signifies Shikol Rift, land of parts of the candy implies Tal Mishidesh in Bengal. Like this, he also uses this type of uh, words for this as well. Uh, in the area of narration to nature, it is again the point of climate change. He also discusses events like the presence of a uh, ship form, which is uh, we can see in the chapter of Saikin, where Dean and Chinta are, uh, are walking, uh, walking at uh, Venice. And, he shows uh, the event of ship form happens. Then uh, his encounter with spider, uh, which is in Venice as well. Uh, Witching of dolphins and bells, uh, etc., which is uh, we know through the Puyallis character. Now, direction through myth and symbol. This is the most important and interesting part of narration that how through myth we describe, uh, describe the narrative that goes used myth as narrative to on three distinguished levels. Contemporary, historical, and mythological, ghost intervenes the real and fantastical using supernatural elements like haunting and appearance of snake and spiders associated with Mansa Devi. So, this whole event or insects or any, uh, any uh, insect game is related indirectly or directly with Mansa Devi's myth. By depicting diverse characters and invoking myth, history, in fact, and fiction, ghost has created a work that contrasts the past with contemporary culture over climate change and cross-border migration. The incorporation of symbol as intriguing level to the narrative, particularly with the use of three key symbols. The snake, as we can see in the pictures, first one is snake, the second one is spider, and the third one is island, which is ghetto. These symbols are transferred into clues within the road map, followed by the Bandhuki Sagar in the novel. Now the last one is narration through religion. Uh, here is an article I find. Uh, I deal with religion, nature, and life in Sundarbans by Kudin. We discussed that how religion shapes the narration and beliefs surrounding the natural environment of the Sundarbans mangrove forests in Bengal. For the Muslim and Hindu fisher, for honey collectors and wood cutters who depend on forests for their livelihood, religion uh, in this way, Hindu and Muslim are connected and have depends on their food and uh, not. Uh, in religion, a political thing. Uh, this idea of religion is used by ghosts, uh, not likely that, but likely in it that, uh, in a way, that he shows a Muslim family as a caretaker of local shrine, which is uh, Mansha Devi's myth, as we know. Uh, normally, this myth connected with Hindu, but uh, here the caretaker of this shrine is uh, a Muslim family. Challenging the assumption that Hindu's elements would be more prominent religious practices related to re uh, region sacred spaces. Ghost narration blends uh, Muslim, Hindu, Bengali, uh, this all culture, and with that he also uh, talks about uh, with the talk about different languages. Like as you can see, uh, he doesn't only use English language, but he also uses uh, uh, Bengali and Latin uh, language as well. Uh, from which we can see that how uh, different uh, through different different narratives or experiments, he tries to speak. Uh, different things as well. So, uh, narration blends Muslim Hindu Bengal culture elements seamlessly reflecting the syncretic or combined nature of religious expression in this area by portraying a Muslim family as uh, custodians of shrine revered by both communities. Ghost highlights that the shared reverence for the natural environment that transcends religious bounds. Uh, instead of portraying the religious landscape from single perspective, Ghost once approach acknowledges the intricate interplay of diverse faith traditions that have shaped the spiritual worldwide of Sundarbans inhabited. So, in this way, through so many narrations, uh, normally we see narration from first person point of view or from past or present narration, but uh, through this, we can also see that narration, uh, narrator, anything can be from uh, various views. So we can find uh, different, different ideas for narration as well and highlight. So, here are my works I made. Thank you. Stage is open for questions. Pooja, how does the book mix together things from today, thing, uh, things from the past and the stories from the mind and uh, does this make the story more inter interesting for you? Uh, yes, uh, it is like a 
कोश इंटरवेंट सो मेनी एस्पेक्ट्स इन इन दिस पर्टिकुलर नोवेल इट इज इट इज नॉट हिंडर्ड एज वी ऑल नो ही मेक अ वेरियस थिंग हिस्ट्री विथ एज आई डिस्कस सो ही मेक्स टुडे एंड टुमारो एज वेल देयर इज अ वन प्ले व्हिच वी आर वी स्टडीड अ डांस ऑफ द फॉरेस्ट लाइक दैट द नॉन लीनियर नैरेटिव व्हिच इन दैट मेक्स द स्टोरी और प्ले वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग लाइक दैट इन दिस वन आइलैंड द मिक्स ऑफ टुडे and mix of part and mix of stories uh, we get to know that we are interested more in that in reality if someone is speaking essay we are not interested in it but if uh, in contrasting of that if someone is uh, telling the story which involves folk tales or or some myth characters like that we are more interested in that so it is a human a little, a little human uh, nature that we are uh, uh, we are attracted to what this mixing or interesting things uh, other than uh, other than normal knowledge uh pooja Uh, how did the author's use of descriptive words and pictures uh, in the book help you uh, imagine the scenes and understand the feelings of the character? Uh, yes, author's use of descriptive words and pictures. As we all know, that narration is something which make our heart uh, throbbing. Like uh, when we are listening some stories or someone narrating some stories, we are imagining we are imagining that scenario in our like uh, if we see that i go from here to there we start to imagine even if i uh, if i say it as if here we start to imagine uh, like that so the way ghost uh, use the words and describe from personal point of view it is also important to note that this personal point of view make this story interesting and uh, it 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 totally uh, dwells into our mind that we are start imagining that how chinta uh, felt uh, when he heard about his uh, husband that we also feel somewhere somewhere a little uh, little sadness of uh, course we imagine that scene that that is present she is talking uh, she is talking to her dad daughter we uh, we can imagine that how she is talking to a ghost not a ghost she is uh, maybe psychologically not well uh, like that we but we can imagine that she is talking uh, to her daughter so like that how ghost use words for describe that character which also uh, which also important that how we imagine in uh, through that uh, words so it is a plus point in this gun island that words and uh, the descriptive manner is a very big Hello everyone. I am Rajesh Hari for the fourth season of the presentation. On the first day, I am going to be going to present on unveiling political power dynamics inside from the Revolution 2020, written by Chetan Bhagat. This is my academic information. This is the title of the presentation and the table of contents. So first, I would like to give the basic. Uh, information about the uh, author chetan bhagat so as we all as we all know he was the renowned popular writer 
and uh, very famous in her contemporary Indian popular literature. So Chetan Bhagat is a reputed Indian author. He is a, a trend changer among the Indian youths. So uh, as we all know in our youth, we all, uh, all uh, once upon a time, at least once upon a time, uh, listen the name of the Chetan Bhagat. Chetan Bhagat has a special concern for Indian youths. Almost all his novels are centered around the youth, uh, youth uh, younger generation of India. His novel Revolution 2020, written in 2011, deals with the burning issues of uh, postmodern era. Uh, like we all know about uh, uh, politics, corruption and uh, issues of uh, education systems are uh, discussed in this uh, uh, novel uh, with the uh, help of the, uh, uh, with the story of the love triangle. Chetan Bhagat projects many aspects of the younger generation, their economic condition, education, relationship and human values. He narrates his story in simple language so that the common people can understand it what he tries to convey to society, he does not have any fear to express his idea to develop the nation. Uh, he wants uh, corrupt, uh, corrupt free India. So he was uh, he, he was using the very easy ling uh, language to reach out to every uh, people of the India. Key facts about the novel. So it is uh, uh, the setting of the novel is Varanasi, India. Uh, holy place, but the where the, some corrupt, uh, corrupt things uh, is happening. Theme, the main theme is corruption, education, love and success. Plot focuses on three main characters, Gopal, Aarti and uh, Raghav. This is also called a love triangle with uh, this specific themes. Social commentary, so offers, uh, social, uh, offers uh, social commentary on the societal issues like pressure to success and integrity. Deception and film adaptation uh, on the uh, report of Bollywood adaptation, but not release any of the film on this uh, work until the 2020. Introduction to the novel. The novel revolves around a love triangle between three uh, characters of the novel. It unveils the socio political. Uh, uh, commercialization and corrupting existing in Indian education system, particularly in the private engineering college sector. Bhagat's writing offers a realistic portrait of the struggle of students from small towns and villages uh, who view cracking this uh, entrance exam as their only hope for the uplifted future. While Gopal represents the materialistic success story, Raghav, despite being an engineer, attempted to bring about social change through journalism, raising questions about corruption and the priorities. The political concerns in uh, Jaitan Bhagat's uh, novel, Revolution 2020. So, novel exposes a deep-rooted political corruption prevent, uh, prevent in uh, India through the character of Amal Shukla and the CM of Vans. Shukla, a local politician, uh, missed the appropriate funds from the Ganga action plan and for personal gain while portraying him himself as working for public welfare, he engages in illegal actions and uh, uses uh, the public sector for his uh, private uh, benefits uh, the novel critics the nexus between politicians, builders, and capitalists to set up illegal private policies by floating norms. Through such satirical portrayal, Bhagat exposes the semantic political corruption at all levels for personal enrichment, abuse of power, cronyism, and suppression of freedom of press. Corruption uh, as the tool of power. As we all know in the politic, uh, politics and uh, when anybody is working as a politician, there may be the corruption is most of the time we can see that. We can, I cannot say that every time the corruption is there in power, but the most of the time we can see. Corrupt officials, leaders can use their position to accumulate wealth, resources and influences. So here with the example of Amela Shukla and the uh, uh, Chief Minister of Paranasi, they are uh, uh, they are making corruption in the uh, uh, land, uh, 
land land problem and uh, after they are also involved in the education so the corruption is come from the politics to the education and we can see from this uh, those who are living in small towns and small cities their dream is uh, generally they are they have dream to work hard learn hard and get success in their life and earn money but when uh, any person those who are from this type of background and uh, now on the big cities or in the in the corrupt power uh, in uh, with the uh, help of politicians they are not able to get their uh, uh, they are not pay off their hard education at the proper manner so this can we can say this is the uh, only uh, we can say a golden net or a golden uh, chain that is the uh, politic politicians show the students or the youngsters about job and uh, other things uh, you have to uh, first uh, work hard study more and get successful but at that time not the only thing is that uh, working hard and uh, for the success is uh, for working for everybody Elite funds can find a finance, violence, propaganda, and operation of revolutionary movement. So, political corruption is different from administrative, bureaucratic cor uh, corruption. A corrupt president, government, minister, or ruling party is a different sort of problem than is, for example, a teacher or a nurse taking bribes to offer services. So, here we can say. If the corruption is in some uh, private uh, sector or in the other sector, then it might be, it is not be pardonable, but it might be pardonable. But if the cor corruption and the uh, pressure of political power is comes upon the in education system and in the medical system, so it is never ever pardonable, pardonable in a, uh, any democratic uh, country. Comparison to re, uh, comparison to real world political uh, scenarios in the novel, the ruling elite use corruption. Uh, for example, bribe, embezzlement, uh, greenism to uh, consolidate power and suppress dissent, uh, mirroring uh, tactics used by authoritarian regimes worldwide. The key point is to draw parallel between the fictional depiction in Bhagat's novel. And world, uh, well now real world example where corruption has been uh, violated as an uh, instrument of authoritarian control against the public interest. However, avoid direct quoting the novel without permission. So, for example, we can take the example of RT. Uh, here, uh, the, uh, the Ganga Tech Company is the, for the college and for the higher education. But uh, in uh, right now in the March there is the entries for the RD those who are uh, have 1.50 uh, 50,000 lakh or less income uh, their one or two child children can uh, get the uh, benefit of this RD right to education in the country. But there are many private schools those who are not giving the admissions to under those who are taking the admission of RD from the 1st uh, April to 4th April, there is a re-editing of this uh, form uh, right now in this uh, four days. So, we can even see from the school uh, school education to the university education, higher education, the corruption is uh, everywhere and the political power, those who are in uh, political power and position, they are also support those kinds of things because then those who are in uh, uh, education and they are also have a good uh, relationship with the uh, those all uh, politicians and then and only these all things are uh, allow allow allowed to these mal practices are allowed to do in education political power political power dynamics entrenched uh, ruling elite maintain a grip on power through corruption cronyism Exploit says uh, state resources for uh, personal gain, suppress dissent and uh, civil liberties. Uh, here, if we are talking about uh, suppression of uh, suppression of civil liber uh, liberties, uh, delusionate youth and student activists.
frustrated with lack of opportunities, injustice, uh, organized protests, demanding reforms, challenge established power structures. So students, uh, in the youth, students are very active and they want to uh, change in the country, they want to rebel. So they are uh, actively, actively participate in those kind of things. But uh, uh, it is also the uh, responsibility to education, education, uh, education system to tell them how political power works. If they not, pro if they don't know how political power properly work, so they may be the head, uh, head of the politicians for their personal use, uh, usages. And we all are, uh, uh, all are know how it works. And uh, in, uh, for, with the example of movie Akira, there is a female protagonist uh, who uh, all students are uh, uh, protesting and uh, protesting against uh, for the, some silly things uh, that, is, that should be changed in college. But the, uh, in the one female protagonist who knows uh, where to protest and how to protest. So with the help of uh, this example, the education system is uh, also in uh, teaching us in a real manner to how we can understand the politics and power of the politics and power dynamics to not be used by the political power. Cycle of protest and repression. Authorities use force surveillance to crush uprising, brutally further fuel public anger unrest, setting the stage for uh, revolution. So, this is the authorities there in uh, India, we can say there is the army, police, they are the driven by force. So, when there is the government and the political power don't want any kind of uh, rebellion, at that, time, at that time they use this kind of forces over the uh, civil, uh, civil. A second uh, consequence of modern technology is that political communication is now far more or a live two-way conversation. Historical, historically, uh, political leaders would address the nation or their constitutions uh, either direct, directly or via the help of the newspaper. So this is the third party method. But in now, uh, in the age of the social media, there is the, not only the way to communicate the uh, people. So politicians and political power also use the um, this uh, social media handle to use uh, to spread their personal propaganda uh, among the youth or among the citizen of the country. So it can uh, it can be the also considered the power dynamics. In uh, last semester, with the help of uh, this standard video, there is uh, six uh, objects of how power works. We also learned in uh, last semester. According to Marx, uh, Marx, I got the economic structure of society. I got the economic structure consists of the base or infrastructure from the economic base on every period emerges a sub, uh, superstructure certain from uh, of laws and poli politics. A certain kind of state whose essen essential function is to legitimize the power of the social class which owns the means of economic production. So, if uh, we are uh, applying the Marxist uh, criticism on it, at that time the power should be learned uh, with the help of how politics uh, works. The ruling elite class controls the economic based class which allows them to shape the political legal superstructure to serve uh, their capitalist interests and legitimize the power. Clash between an oppressive, self-serving regime and a disaffected younger generation demanding change. Youth's legitimate grievance met with violence, suppression rather than dialogue. Authoritarian state winding power through control of resources, media, security and forces. So it is very easy to driven youth in the way of violence. So, uh, but here with the uh, example of Raghav, we can see he was not driven towards any kind of violence, but uh, he was uh, 
uh, using his uh, understanding and maturity properly and he was uh, using uh, without uh, uh, any step back he was uh, using the media uh, media to spread the awareness impact on youth and society so this illusion in a youth lack of economic opportunities as the in as in uh, for, uh, as in uh, slide i have told about that uh, those who are came from the rural background and born to success with their hard work so this type of situation also impact on the youth access of access to information so with the help of uh, social media there is not always the proper uh, data of the, how politic how politicians and political power work but if the youth is the uh, only governed by those uh, data that it means uh, just their mind it is may be corrupted with those uh, wrong information and the gen um, generalization divide older generation is designed to the status uh, quo so there is the generation gap generally in a uh, in polit uh, politi uh, politicians old old people are uh, the major number of people are old number those who are uh, on the high position because there is the required many experience uh, at all so youth unwilling to accept the suppression of rights so the generation gap should be uh, healing here societal upheaval uh, student protest challenge established order authorities violence crackdown breed unrest potential for revolutionary changes uh, there remain a uh, pall of gloom about their uh, bright young people and existential angst about their future and an unrealistic uh, presence of their past. The curious blend of humor and pathos, of hopes and fears. To success and fear marks his best selling dark comedies of contemporary India. This is the remark on uh, Bhagat's work. Uh, Bhagat's uh, novel Revolution 2020 exposed the deep rooted political corruption in uh, India's education system that exploits the marginalized and aspira uh, aspirations of middle class youth. And uh, yeah, the novel highlights the betrayal of uh, those uh, resisting this uh, road as the ruling party sacrificed the corrupt politicians before elections to merely appear clean. If we, uh, if we are recently, uh, according to last data of uh, UGC, UGC almost banned 20, uh, uh, maybe the 20 universities are banned uh, in India according to the list of UGC. So where, uh, when there is the concept of uh, education, there might be the for uh, giving the, the who are those who are giving the permission to those uh, those uh, uh, we can say universities so there is the politicians and political powers are also work those who are giving the permission to open up the university so according to last data there is the 20 universities are uh, banned uh, as per the list of uh, UGC and its guideline Youth and political awakening, access to alternative narrative from uh, apathy to activism. And so what is the solution of the whole kind of thing? In the last two, two slides, I am uh, going to conclude in this uh, uh, presentation. So what is the solution to make the politicians and political power to less corruption in the education system, in medical system. So combining corruption is the crucial for achieving sustainable development, digital revolution and use of information and communications technology by governments can provide efficient services, reduce uh, discretionary power of officials and thus uh, curb corruption. So to uh, if we are uh, going to a uh, transparent system, then the uh, digitalization is the good option for a work uh, for working, and uh, where the politicians also may not uh, able to uh, uh, do their corruption. But if 
this system should be uh, applied in a proper manner then and then uh, then and only we are able to create the fruits of this uh, uh, digitalization in the government although the e government is a recent phenomenon phenomenon it can be regarded as important tool for combating corruption improving the uh, governance enhancing transparency in public administration reducing uh, this uh, predatory power increasing exposure and uh, eliminating uh, eliminating opportunities for corruption if the digital things are applied properly in with the proper manner then it can be the solution for the politic uh, politicians those who are uh, those who are uh, doing the corruption and uh, use their power in wrong manner so uh, here i have i'm concluding uh, with to uh, try to give a uh, solution and what is uh, why this topic is uh, it uh, can be the uh, topic of discussion uh, specifically e government can reduce corrupt behavior ex uh, externally by enhancing relationship with uh, citizens and uh, internally by more effectively controlling and monitoring employee behavior so as we all uh, our uh, scholarship forms and our admission forms if uh, it is uh, and uh, for the forms that is we are applying for the government jobs if it, there is a uh, uh, digitalization there is the uh, less chances of inter interference of the political person Uh, these private universities are actually creating cancer in the society. They are good for good for nothing. Government should have strict action actions against this uh, fraudulent and uh, mal practices in private education institutes, which are considered as the uh, adopt of uh, god goddess of knowledge. So uh, it is uh, like uh, it can be seen as the allegation on the private university. we can also see the some uh, private education system are with the good practices but uh, if the government is there who is taking care for those all things so that can be the good uh, government institutions and government uh, universities and government sectors is there if uh, there is a uh, when the talk about uh, medical uh, system and the education system if they government is uh, government government and politicians and political parties that to take care of those all things then uh, it can be the uh, solutions here is the references that i have to in my presentation uh, thank you now i'm open for a question question Um, Rajeshwari, uh, how do the character in the novel perceive the role of education in bringing about social change and uh, uh, addressing political corruption? Uh, if uh, in the context of uh, work uh, revolution twenty twenty, there are the two uh, characters, main uh, Gopal and uh, Raghav. So here, the Raghav uh, and Gopal are studying uh, uh, together uh, during the childhood childhood time, and uh, after when they are young, they are also preparing for JEE kind of uh, competitive exam. And uh, Gopal is not able to get admission in those kind of uh, and not able to crack in those exam, but Raghav is able to do it. But uh, the people uh, there is a uh, can say the. Uh, Gopal's father want to be his uh, son as the engineer. So we can say he was he personally maybe don't want to be the this kind of uh, success in his life, and he may uh, don't able to crack it. But Raghav is uh, able to crack it and becoming an engineering. But uh, in future he was uh, deciding to be uh, the jur uh, journalist and doing the. Work for the newspaper and for the in the the all the scenario of corruption and the political power. He was not able to get the steady job in the new or this uh, any uh, particular kind of uh, news house, and he was uh, uh, rusticated from here. And uh, he was uh, owns his private uh, 
kind of news house. So he was the Raga who was trying to change into society in front of uh, doing good good uh, journalism. And at the end of Gopal also have changed his mind to, to, to the good things. So Rajeshwari, uh, if the idea which you described the of Revolution 2030 were imagined in a dystopian future, uh, how would the power dy dynamics change and what new challenges would it? Okay, we are shifted the things towards the dystopian, uh, uh, dystopian uh, culture or can we say dystopian world. So with the help of uh, George Orwell's novel 1984, uh, there is the uh, here the Raghav is also try to uh, bring the uh, voice out of the corruption. Uh, the uh, MLA Shukla and uh, Gopal tried uh, starting uh, the uh, university or college in a wrong manner uh, with the help of corruption. But uh, if there is a dyst uh, dystopian world, so there is maybe there is no space for uh, any uh, any individual to speak out uh, even any world in the we can say it, uh, there is a totalitarian or authoritarian government is ruling over there so maybe the space uh, here there is the concept of a revolution to gain revolution but if there is a dystopian world there is the, even the world revolution and using this world it is uh, even more hard for anybody so this is as per my How can I start? Yes. Sherry is not there. Hello everyone, I am Riddhi Rathod. Today is the first day of our same to presentation. On this day, I am present on migration and human trafficking in Gun Island. Here is my personal information. Table of content. So first of all, introduction of author. Amito Ghosh, a pioneer of English literature in India, is born in Calcutta in the year 
1956, Amita Ghosh is raised and educated at the same time in as different locations as Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Iran, Egypt, India, and the United Kingdom. Ghosh is the author of the Circle of Reason, the Shadow Lines, the Calcutta uh, Chromosome, the Glass Palace, the Hungry Tide, and Sea of Puppies. Notable non fiction writing of uh, his. In uh, an antique land, dancing in Cambodia, at the large in Burma, etc. Amito Ghosh holds four lifetime achievements awards and five honorary doctorates. Uh, Jananpit Jana, uh, Jana, Jana, Jana Award uh, in 2018, Sahat Sahitya Academy Award in 1989, Anand Purushkar 1990. Uh, Dan, Dan David Prize 2010 and Padma Shri in 2007. About the novel, the novel is originally published in 6 June 2019. The genre of novel is historification and climate, uh, climate change. The novel also explores the dynamics of storytelling that links the past and the present. The theme of the novel parallels between myths and modern events, climate change, migration, and human trafficking, and the last theme of uh, etymology. The novel focusing on two places, Venice and Sundarban. So, first, uh, so what is migration and human trafficking? Human trafficking organized criminal. Uh, criminal activity in which human beings are treated as the possessions to be controlled and exploited as by being forced into prostitution or uh, in involuntary in labor. Uh, you, the human trafficking business is the biggest uh, com, com destiny industry in the world, even bigger than the drug trade uh, it reaches it reaches uh, very deep into society, especially poor society. What is migration? In the global context movement of, uh, of a person either across uh, an international border, international migration or within a state, it is uh, intermigration for more than one year uh, irrespective of the causes. Uh, voluntary or involuntary and the means regular or irregular used to migrate. Uh, according to the World Bank, India has the highest number of international migrants people with over 80 million Indian born migrants living uh, abroad in 2020 year. Uh, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development reports that 25% of people, all high-skilled immigrants, uh, immigrates to OECD uh, countries in 2023. Or illegal migrants people, uh, most of India, um, India is trying to cross the border illegally with the bigger touching uh, 9670 in 2023. Novel and Migration Gun Island portrays the issue of climate migration within the backdrop of narrative fiction. The events like storm in Sundarban's fires in California, tornadoes and floods in Venice have been occurred due to climate change. At the same time, Ghost links uh, adventures of 17th century Bengali merchant traveling between the Bay of Bengal and the Mediterranean to struggles of present day, present day migrants who are moving across the broad borders. Uh, Gun Island explores different forms of migration, starting from the people, starting from people and entire communities being uprooted from there native land to drastic drastic change recently prevalent in migratory patterns of different species uh, ghost gives many instances of climate uh, related to castropress uh, being in the of such migration 
He talked in detail about the cyclone Alia, which uh, hit the Sundarban in 2009. Alia's long term consequences were, uh, were even more de devastating uh, than those of uh, earlier cyclones. Hundreds of miles of uh, embankment had, be had been swept away, and the sea had invaded places where it had never ent entered before. Vast tracts of uh, once fertile land and uh, had been swamped by salt water, rendering them uncultivable for generations, if not forever. Uh, the evacuation to the the evacuation to had pro, uh, produced of uh, effects that no one could have uh, foretold, having uh, once been uprooted from their villages. Many evacuees had decided not to return, knowing that uh, their lives allow, uh, alive always uh, had would be even more uh, precarious now. Communities had been destroyed and families displaced. Expect for uh, expect for the illegal migration from the Sundarbans. The reason behind the illegal movement of uh, refugees from uh, from other developing countries are not overtly uh, re revealed in the text. Uh, the uh, islands of Sundarbans are constantly being swallowed up by the sea. They are disappearing before our eyes. According to Kanai, every merchant who is ever sailed out of Bengal has had to pass through the Sundarbans. There is no other way to reach the sea. Sea level rise owing to global warming, anthropogenic uh, drivers uh, and land subsidence uh, eventually affects, to, affects the mangrove forest and uh, vulnerable uh, co coastal communities. Once is in uh, Gun Island, the resolved uh, young people of the land taking the bold decision of moving abroad, uh, albeit illegally, illegally to earn money for improved, improved and stable life. Rafi and Tipu used illegal migration channels to move to Italy, uh, is also no less influenced by the Access to technology and internet via uh, via smartphones, which can feed images of a free and uh, affluent life in the global north, and induce individuals uh, to aspire for the lifestyle migration, which implicates the uh, pervasive hand handheld devices for inspiring individuals uh, to migrate from the glo uh, global south. The text highlights that uh, illegal Im immigrants uh, become political refugees, uh, social outcasts and homeless and nameless entities, the exploited resources, the, the sordid tale of illegal migration is brought out poignantly yet starkly through two young characters, Tipu and his friend Rafi. Tipu and Rafi, along with uh, many other illegal migrants, pull, uh, fall victims to smuggling, which uh, ends at uh, material gains from the illegal crossing of uh, international border. And there can be constant from the in each individual to be more. Uh, Yaya focus on the socio-economic, uh, political, and climate, uh, climatologic. Uh, reason for and the consequence of the illegal migration of the underprivileged uh, underprivileged people portrayed in the text under the under discussion by situating them within the framework of the uh, contemporary era and capitalist globalization. His aim of carrying out a close reading of the text. Uh, discuss and also to analyze related passage for uh, passages for uh, for the investigation the uh, investigation of these two contemporary global crises, uh, which was anthropo anthropogenic uh, climate and uh, uh, illegal migration.
four types of migration which we can see in our uh, novel educational migration economic reason natural uh, natural calamities and religion issues uh, palash ma palash migrated to italy as a student he said in the text i am i came to italy as a student you see which sets me apart from most bengali migrants they in uh, bangladesh my circumstances uh, circumstances were completely different from theirs most of them are from villages and small towns but my father is a banker in dhaka uh, my older brother is a civil servant quite high up i studied at the dhaka, uh, dhaka uh, univer university and even uh, even have a degree in uh, management for some uh, year uh, some year one worked as a manager in a multinational corporation i used to go uh, go to work in a car every day wearing a suit and a tie for economic reason tipu and rafi uh, uh, migrate we uh, he said uh, uh, they said we spent uh, two weeks in dhaka and then uh, the dalal puts uh, put uh, us on a mini bus along with a group of their men i was carrying only a backpack uh and so was tipu we had some clothes uh, clothes a bit of food and around 25 us dollar each that's all for natural calamities the lubna kala uh, lubna kala because of the strong and death death of uh, his true relatives uh shoker uh, shabaga uh, she said everything is gone gone now the house the people the water uh, take it, taken it all for religion uh, religion issues bilal and kabir migrated uh, they said one day there was a uh, there was a fight my uncle and cousin attacked my father and me and knocked my uncle down after that it was like a riot proud uh, kabir and i managed to get away but from then on we had to be constantly on the run uh, for exa uh, migration example from uh, bollywood movie uh, donkey the movie portrays the human side of migration by showing the hopes dreams fears and emotions of the migrants migrants who embark on the donkey route it also depicts the cultural diversity and solidarity uh, among the migrants who come from different backgrounds religion and uh, but share a common goal and fate uh, the movie reflects on the dilemmas and challenges that migrants face in their uh, quest for a better life such as the loss of identity the separation from family the uh, adaptation to a new culture and the risk of death it also explores the moral and ethical questions that uh, the migrants have to confront such as the leg uh, legality and legitimacy and uh, necessity of their action another two movie namaste england uh, namaste england and shit uh, which we can see migrants uh, uh, by uh, donkey road uh, immigrant uh, namaste england is uh, another movie that portrays uh, illegal immigration where arjun kapoor's uh, character travels uh, illegal to uh, london to unity with uh, parinithi chopra uh, shit movie uh, uh, Radhika Madan and Sunny Kaushal's film uh, explores the theme of uh, illegal migration, where the characters of Sunny travel to United Kingdom to meet his lady love. Another Gujarati movie, Shubh Yatra, directed by uh, Manish Sasaini. This Gujarati movie family drama uh, 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 explores the uh, desire among Gujaratis to fulfill, uh, fulfill their uh, U.S. dream. as the character 
navigate the uh, hurdle of uh, illegal immigration in their quest to find a better life in abroad. Uh, now I conclude my presentation. Uh, uh, Post uh, sets light on the issue uh, issues of migration, humans showing uh, the challenges faced by those uh, forced to leave their uh, homes and uh, ex uh, exploitations they often uh, encounter. It calls for uh, attention to these issues and the need for action. Here is my reference. So, Ritzi, my question is that what are some potential consequences of uh, illegal migration on the economy of gun violence? Gun, uh, gun Island by putting pressure on resources like uh, health care, education and social uh, social services, it can uh, it affect uh, lab, uh, labor, labor market uh, by increasing uh, job, by increasing job uh, uh, by increasing competition for job and uh, potentially low, uh, lowering wages. Uh, many many strains of public uh, public uh, infra infrastructure uh, and uh, increased uh, crime crime rates impacting uh, overall economic uh, stability. So, repeat a different question. Like if uh, we were to create a virtual reality experience based on gun island to raise awareness about human trafficking and other uh, other thing you suggested, what specific scene or challenges would be most impactful to include? Uh, we can uh, uh, we can include the things of uh, uh, depicting the uh, previous journey of. Uh, uh, their challenges and uh, challenges and uh, living condition uh, by uh, migration and uh, also we can also we can could show the efforts of individual individual and uh, organization or uh, organizations of working to combat and uh, human trafficking highlighting the importance of awareness and action
May I start? Yes. Hello everyone, I'm Dinkla and today at the first day of our presentation season, I'm going to, uh, under paper named Contemporary English Literature, uh, I'm pre uh, presenting on Unveiling Female Objectification, a Critical Analysis of Revolution 2020. And these are my category dates, a table of contents about the writer, then about the text, objectification of RT, a character in the novel, then conclusion. Uh, about the writer Chetan Bhagat. Chetan Bhagat is, is the author of 14 blockbuster books. These include uh, 10 novels like uh, uh, Two States, The Revolution 2020, Half Girlfriend, One Indian Girl, and many more. Uh, about the book, Revolution 2020 is a thought provoking novel written by Chetan Bhagat. Renowned for his insightful narratives on contemporary Indian society. Set in the background of Varanasi, the novel integrally waves together the lives of three main characters, Gopal, Aarti and Raghav, as they navigate through the complexities of love, ambition and corruption. Against the background of India's education system and the pursuit of success, uh, Bhagat crafts the uh, compelling tale of explores, uh, that explores uh, themes of social inequality, moral dilemmas and the quest for personal redemption. Through its uh, engaging storytelling and re uh, relatable characters, Revolution 2020 offers readers a captivating journey that provokes reflection on the challenges and aspiration of modern day India. A major character in the novel, there are three major characters in Revolution 2020, Gopal, Raghu and Arthur. Each of them significantly contributes to the storyline, aligning uh, seamlessly with the author's intentions. Like how Chetan Bhagat has portrayed all of them is uh, uh, coming next. Authorial intentions in the written text. Like, uh, as we all have studied, like, uh, there is power dynamics in writing also. Like, uh, any writing is not as innocent as it seems to be. Written, uh, when a text is written, technical choices must be made in view of producing a particular result in the story's verbal representation. In this way, the narrative employs distancing and other effects to create particular narrative mood that governs the regulation of narrative information according to uh, Janet, Gerard Janet. The narrator's voice sometimes merges with the voice of the omniscient author, sometimes with the voice of one of the characters, but sometimes it separates and makes direct appeal to the reader. Like, uh, there is, uh, author will be speaking, uh, under the uh, reflection of narrators, like whoever is narrating the story, author will intentionally put his own uh, thoughts and ideas uh, over his uh, characters. Any definition of narrative that ignores the importance of use is giving an incomplete picture. Like there, there will be always importance of use, like how a writer wants to use his narrative style to convey his story. Patriarchy is a social system in which men are the primary authority figures in the areas of political leadership, moral authority and control of uh, property. Like Adams and Bell are putting in, in the article, like, uh, there will be moral authority also. Like, there will be people uh, on the basis of, they will be deciding the courts of morality, leadership and uh, property. Narrative is also linked to language. The way a story can be manipulated by the character or in, or in the display of medium contributes to how story is seen by the world. Unveiling female, female objectification in, in a critical analysis of revolution 2020. And that is, uh, th these are the parameters uh, that how uh, art is being objectified by a writer. Focus on physical appearance. Throughout the novel, artist's physical attributes uh, are emphasized to offer more than her inner qualities or intellect. This focus on her appearance contributes to her objectification, reducing her to a superficial level. Uh, uh, the dialogue by, uh, dialogue by uh, Gopal, artist looks had always drawn appreciative comments from the school teachers. However, Two years ago, when she turned 15, the, the whole school started taking up, uh, talking about her. Statements such as the most beautiful girl in uh, Sunbeam school, she should be an actress, she can apply for Miss 
India become incre increasingly common. So uh, these are uh, some uh, about looks how beautiful art it was. Then transactional uh, relationships. Art is often uh, depicted as being valued for a connections or potential as a spouse rather than uh, or uh, uh, being in a relationship to male characters like how she was uh, her relationship was moving uh, moving with, uh, from uh, Radha to Gopal and then Gopal to Radha again and she is being uh, uh, transferred her time in again and then uh, rather than her individual qualities for example discussions about her marriage uh, prospects that these are framed in uh, terms of financial gain or social status, reinforcing her objectification as a commodity. Uh, dialogue again for uh, dialogue again by uh, Gopal. So artist father can't and uh, I quote and I quote. Uh, so artist father can't and artist want. So son in law maybe uh, go meet her at the, at the hotel. Take her uh, entire day off for her. That that's all she wants. Your time and affection. She will return your love ten times over more. So, uh, Gopal is here suggesting Raghav to be with Aarti and uh, to, uh, to be benefited, of course, from political um, connections. Then, limited agency. Aarti's action and uh, decisions are often influenced or detected by male characters, particularly Gopal and Raghav. This portrait limits her agency and reinforces her objectification as a passive figure. Who, uh, whose purpose is to serve the desires or ambitions and thoughts of others, uh, especially male characters. Stereotypical gender roles. Arti is sometimes depicted conforming to traditional gender roles, such as being submissive or uh, accommodating, which can contribute to her objectification by reinforcing her expectation of how women should behave. Like, uh, she will be always behaving accordingly uh, how male characters are uh, behaving or how their action she will be uh, reacting upon the actions of male characters lack of depth artist character is not always given the depth or complexity afforded to other characters in the novel instead she is sometimes portrayed in in a one dimensional manner focusing solely on her role in relation to the male uh, protagonist rather than her own experience or struggles and dialogue again yeah she eagerly May, May Huna is releasing that week. How can I miss the Shahrukh film? Uh, they should uh, postpone the exam. AI So, uh, this silly kind of dialogues are given to Aarti rather than, rather than any deep dialogues or uh, thought provoking ideas. Uh, some other dialogues uh, like, uh, let's begin with Aarti. The girl who did this to you. In a prologue where uh, Gopal and Chetan Bhagat are. Uh, are uh, doing a discussion and then he uh, directly makes Aarti a, a reason for uh, disruption of, of Gopal. Like if I told her, but you said, uh, quoting, uh, and quoting, like if I told her, but you said you missed me, she would jump and say, but I also said as a friend. And uh, at this dialogue, I quote, as if we were uh, caught again. As if we were in the court of justice, it is so hard to figure girls out. And that was between Rakhav and Aarti, how uh, silly and uh, complex the character is of a uh, girl. I have no answer. I use the women's stick. Then in doubt, say, uh, when they were in doubt, send smiley. I, I send three. Yeah, that is it. A conclusion. In both Revolution 2020 by Chetan Bhagat, uh, in conclusion, uh, conclusion, I am portraying a, uh, a new released movie, uh, Teri Bato Mehta Ucha Ji, where a female uh, robot or artificial intelligence uh, looking like a female character is being portrayed. And it is again also very submissive kind of a personality, like, thick hai, whatever any, uh, the uh, person or protagonist tells her, she will be okay, thick I'll do it. And a very submissive kind of person. Sipra adopts the role of a potential dutiful uh, Indian wife. And again in Aarti also. She will be... Uh, okay. Challenges faced by and navigated by uh, Aarti also. Like how she has been 
submissive to the narration done by Chetan Bhagat. Like Chetan Bhagat himself is a male personality and is narrating Arthil. So she ha he has made Arthil and uh, how uh, upcoming time also, even recently uh, uh, public released, the movies are also portraying uh, female uh, robots to be very silly kind of person. If you want to make some uh, character silly, foolish and uh, submissive, make her female. Like uh, kind of things are happening. Uh, these are my references. Yeah, thank you. You can ask me questions. So, Rinkal, my question is uh, that uh, what are the societal factors within the novel that uh, perpetuate the objectification of women and how would this reflect the real world? <laughs> uh, there are some uh, issues like uh, female, uh, as I also gave some of the dialogues, like female being very silly, they can't have such a huge uh, things to do. As Raghav, as uh, Arthi will be uh, flying around Raghav and Gopal both. Like, uh, like uh, it seems like her own life, life is nothing to her in comparison to love of Raghav and Gopal. Raghav, she, she is used as a very passive character. Her own thoughts and dialogues are not reflected as much as uh, Gopal's. Like, uh, he is the narrator there and being uh, dominant over the whole narrative of uh, Arthi and Raghav also. And social, uh, social. When we talk about the social dynamics, there will be in real world also. Uh, if, if people are thinking to female to be foolish and portray them as uh, objects and uh, uh, the uh, dynamics of money and uh, money will be there. Like if uh, if if they are depending uh, for protection and money over someone, people will always objectify them for for the sake of money and kind of. Rinkal, what do you think Chetan Bhagat's portrayal of a female character is empowering or uh, limiting and why? Uh, we, uh, I, uh, I can't say like Chetan Bhagat is empowering artist character because if, if, if he wanted to do so uh, really, so he, he could have given uh, an in-depth character uh, uh, in-depth personality to her or uh, some kind of character development of Arti instead of other or uh, two characters like uh, Arti also have, might have been uh, revolutionary and the kind of uh, uh, a very stereotypical uh, things are being portrayed by the writer like uh, female also can be corrupt female also can be revolutionary why, why he has choose her to be only love object so that is uh, the answer to your Very good evening to everyone. I am Kushali Dodia, and on the first day of the presentation semester four on contemporary English studies literature, I am going to make my presentation on real life Rakhos exploring the past present and future of journalism in India. Uh, uh, before begin, uh, these are the questions 
that are that I'm going to address in this presentation. Uh, first one is how does Chetan Bhagat's novel relate to contemporary societal issues that is the within the context of journalism in India. Uh, second one is which journalist or YouTuber resonate with the revolutionary themes depicted in the journey of Raghav in the novel? How does the history of journalism intersect with its current landscape? And the last one is the future consideration of the independence journalism in India. These are the points. Uh, the novel Revolution 2020 written by an Indian author, novelist Chetan Bhagat. Uh, uh, falls under the genre of popular fiction. Uh, it has three major characters, Gopal, Raghav and Aarti, and there are three themes, love, corruption and revolution. Each character is connected with each theme. So, Raghav is connected with the theme of revolution. Though the title lies in and around the theme of revolution, we somewhat feel that uh, love and the corruption overlaps the theme of revolution in this way. Uh, before we directly plunge into the revolutionary journalistic aspects in the novel and its considerations, let's first understand what are the basic functions of journalism that should prevail. And India is a democratic country. So there are four major pillars and media is one of them. Four, one of the four pillars of the democracy. Reema Rai in her article, uh, The Role of Media in, in, in Democracy, Indian Democracy, she, uh, sorry, three, she depicts three uh, key ways uh, in terms to promote democracy in India. First one is fostering public debate and political engagement. Second is redistributing power and political influence. Third one is providing a mechanism through which democracy can operate. Uh, moreover, media is a connecting link between the uh, ruling power and people, government and people. And it also tries to ensure the citizen and lets them to understand the information, misinformation, ignorance and uh, checking, uh, fact checking things. Uh, Shirai says that the media also exposes loopholes in democracy, democratic system, which ultimately helps the government in filling the vacuum of loopholes and making a system more accountable, responsible, responsive, and citizen friendly. So, by this, uh, the article uh, argument of Prima Rayson's clear that the major role of journalism is to uh, bring the news, real news, to the people. Now, let us get to the uh, theme of revolution, what is the revolution and why does it took place in the novel. So, Raghav wants to bring, bring revolution in this novel till uh, 2022, 2020. Uh, Bhagat in the novel uh, says that in the blood, one wanted to use his intelligence to start a revolution. What sort of intelligence is having and why he is, uh, how he is wanting to use a kind of a intelligence in terms of the bringing the revolution. It, it tries to address issues such as corruption. As Raghav uh, tries to bring news of corruption and other evils going on in the society. Uh, he begins this the newspaper named the Revolution 2020 that has a very uh, good background and that is a very revolutionary as well. Now, uh, Raghav and his revolution and journalism. Uh, from the initial point of the novel, whenever this uh, Raghav uh, is portrayed uh, uh, in the novel, he is shown that he wanted to be a journalist and he wants to change the system of corruption and the democratic ways. Uh, so, uh, despite of his admission in this engineering colleges, he tries to work in, uh, in these journalistic ways journalistic uh, things. He also took admission in the college where the course of journalism was going on along with this engineering kind of thing. Then in the later part of his life he joined uh, this Dainik News and he wrote about the Ganga Tech College that is uh, owned by uh, Gopal and under the care of Mr. Shukla. Uh, and upon his news he got fired from the job at news, uh, Dainik newspaper. And after 
comes is corruption. This all the aspects that we see parallelly in the present time, all the things can be seen. I have taken up five uh, independent journalists, YouTubers. Uh, they have uh, began or started their YouTube channel and through which they have tried to give news to the people. One of them is not a journalist, but he is a YouTube content creator. But his videos are very much uh, well, researched, well researched and information is very uh, good as well. Uh, now, Ravi, Ravish Kumar, who is a renowned Indian jur journalist who worked in this uh, NDTV India. Uh, during his uh, work at NDTV as well, he got death threats just uh, because of his spreading the news of uh, news related to the truths and uh, speaking against the big firms. Uh, he resigned after Adani take over this uh, news channel. Uh, which uh, he thinks that he is citing free press concerns and he began his uh, own YouTube channel. Uh, the documentary while we watched is based on his life and how he faced each and every obstacles in, in, the, in his journey of uh, journalism. Uh, like Akash Benerji, Ravish Kumar, both are not fired from their job but they have uh, like resigned from their job at news channels. Uh, Akash Benerji also resigned from this journal, journalistic uh, channel Times now uh, due to this concerns of uh, free press concerns. Uh, he began his news news channel named YouTube channel The Dej Bhakta. Uh, Dej Bhakta that talks about the things which is a very like ironical term. He is telling himself that and on the uh, contrary, he is talk, uh, giving uh, statements against government, but that are the uh, main uh, things that should be needed in the democratic India. Deepak Sharma is also an investigative journalist and uh, uh, he faced some censorship and he began his news, uh, this YouTube channel. Abhishek Sharma uh, was working in this APP news. And he was fired uh, from his job at, uh, on like, just because of his coverage on BJP government on PM's address to businessmen in India. Some reasons. And after that, he began his own YouTube channel. Dhruv Rani is not a journalist, as I just mentioned, but he's a powerful create, uh, content creator. His videos on political aspects that involves fact-checking and explanatory content and addressing various significant events. Uh, there are some independent media firms that depends on the subscription and they are not taking anything from these uh, big firms or uh, like uh, private things and news laundry and scrolling. Both are relying on uh, the, their subscription and they try to uh, they try to bring the news that are not brought in attention by the mainstream media uh, over the country. Uh, this Lallandop is not the same in the, in the case of uh, subscription. They are running ads from private uh, corporative things. But they also provide a very good information about uh, the, uh, the information in, in the uh, country. And uh, this news content scrolling, they begin by the journalists who were before uh, that, uh, like, uh, working in some news channels and then they uh, began, they got together and tried to uh, put their efforts in uh, be making a good journalistic content. Uh, now, when, when we are talking about this YouTube, so there is a slight difference between uh, journalist and content creator. Now, nowadays we have, uh, each have the access of this YouTube channel. Uh, people can share the information like people there are lots of youtube channels available that talks about that but there is a uh, misinformation spread by those content creators as well so that is a concern as well so it remains on the side of citizen many a time that to uh, think what is right and what is wrong Saurabh Sharma notes that Indian journalists say the platform is more, more democratic and uncensored place to work but is the growing trend of YouTubers 
calling themselves journalists are cause for concern. There are uh, concerns and uh, things related to all the things. Uh, in the uh, recently in 2023, this telecommunication bill passed in the Parliament of India. Uh, and under that, various things are there. But one point shall be noted is that government can shut down telecommunication anytime, like while this uh, Manipur fight. And riots. So uh, there was a complete internet shutdown. This debate was took under this news laundry, and uh, they talked uh, very uh, in a detail about this uh, telecommunication bill and broadcasting bill. Broadcasting bill was just uh, uh, is not guaranteed. Uh, not uh, passed in the parliament. But if it will pass, then that will be a threat on YouTuber and individual uh, journalist as well. As, this, as one of the major points is that government can raid and seize equipments from journalists, independent journalists. So that remains a concern for YouTube journalism in this field. Uh, while concerning about the future of independent journalism, uh, this uh, YouTube channel uh, is the last hope for this unbiased news in. Uh, uh, the election or whatever thing it is. Uh, YouTube is a viable option for journalists in India from where they can share the uh, right information to the people. Independent journalist Lake Financial Security at Rato, uh, was attacked by uh, Gopal and the people of Shuklasri and his all the equipments were broken from there that and he had to took a job at the uh, at his previous place, then he passed it. But here, what is what is different is that in Drago's case, he uh, his friend is the one who is telling something to the news channel, and he is telling them to take him back when he is not getting job, though it is not known to Rago. But uh, this Rago goes back to the form he has uh, left, and. Uh, when it comes to the real life in real situation in India, it is when, when a person is fired from the job, even if, if only if the person is agreed to the terms and condition of the media firms, then only then a, 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 a person can work for that firm. So um, there is uh, some intricacies related to this issues of rejoining and uh, things. So this rejoining was the cause of his financial breakdown and scarcity. Uh, independent journalists lay financial security, legal protection without institutions. Uh, government raids uh, uh, any time there. So there is a fear of raids, arrest. So many journalists have uh, arrested uh, by this uh, government uh, uh, government uh, things. And uh, misuse of copyright claims and IP laws to send, censor online speech. Uh, that is a self censorship, shoestring budgets, online threats, represent, uh, repressive environment for truth telling, concern over suffocation of Indian journalism, undetermining Indian democracy. So, uh, there are in the ending of this uh, novel, uh, it is the in, at the ending part of the novel, uh, Raghav says that uh, some when Gopal asked him about his ways about uh, journalism, he says that someone has to do it, Gopal. How will all the things change? We all have to do our bit. For change, we need a revolution. A real revolution can only happen when people ask themselves, what is my sacrifice? So, uh, only hope that journalists, independent journalists have that now is that we can contribute a bit in like uh, the channels of News Laundry and uh, YouTube channel of Ravish Kumar and all the people I have mentioned. Uh, when uh, watching their videos, it seems clear that they often address that uh, we will try to uh, make people aware about the things that are going on in our country. So we will not stop here. And uh, there is one quote as well. Uh, that tells that uh, they should, they will not uh, uh, steal the, the work they are doing. So it is like 
when when things uh, thing comes about this uh, when things uh, thing comes about the uh, sort of journalism the concern of youtube journalism and content creation it remains also in the side of the people a citizen to understand and to know that we should not solely depend on what has been told to us but rather we have to check facts and uh, uh, some something uh, true about the thing so individual responsibility is there as well so uh, uh, I, am, uh, i want to end my presentation with uh, this quote i find a job gopal and that mla of yours just because he could get a training file from daynik doesn't mean he can silence the truth so all the uh, real life ragus in india tries to uh, going against the odd of themselves so they try to bring the truth yeah, even if they are fired from their jobs even if they are uh, ransacked even if if they are uh, threatened by the government so that that it says that someone has to do it and we all have to do our bit for change we need a revolution so in this real life ragos in india they they contribute in the uh, journalism of india a lot but though they are remained uh, marginalized just because of this mainstream media talking all the time about the current government so it is not about the role of media is not about talking about goody goody and sweety sweety things about whatever going on but rather they have to find the loopholes that can disrupt the democratic system within the country so this is all about my presentation these are the references thank you so much now i'm open for questions uh tushali what significant events or changes in indian society have influenced the trajectory of journalism in the in the country and in revolution uh, see i have tracked the journey of journalism in india uh, when it was under this british rule people tried to uh, establish their own newspaper why because people were feeling uh, uh, under privileged they are not treated well by the government that not government by the but the british rule that time. so they began this journal uh, they own established their own newspapers and uh, magazines uh, now in a recent time uh, when we have freedom of speech we have everything but what the mainstream journalism is doing and what is the uh situation of this independent journalism it will be the same because uh, though we have this freedom of speech and freedom of press in india still uh, this uh, independent journalism uh, journalists make us aware that there should uh, some questions against government as well and that is the basic thing about the democratic system same happens in the revolution 2020 Rago tries to bring this the Ganga Tech uh, college uh, for corruption things, and before that he tries to think and uh, try to write about this Ganga action plan. And just because of his exposure of some corruption going on and going within the country, he is getting fired from his job. He is ransacked by people against whom he has. uh right so it is something so the same thing is happening here so many journalists nowadays are getting arrested their uh, their houses and their media houses are uh, raided by people and all these independent journalists have very small setup studios and even that they are uh, uh, spoiling so they that remains a concern over this that how uh this trajectory that there, there are future consideration if this broadcasting bill will, will come the independent journalism will like get uh uh complete uh, destructions so there will uh, not remain any sort of journalistic good journalistic true journalistic uh, ways so this is all Rishali, how can we prepare youth to access accurate uh, news in contemporary times 
and how how can we teach them about uh, proper journalism yes. see uh, youth uh, as we all are student of literature we are studying this novel revolution 2020 by that we have gained this insight that there are something going wrong within the country and we are addressing this issue right now while talking about the aspect of the law uh, it is i will not say it is impossible because nothing is impossible uh, there are people who are trying to uh, make youth aware about the, the accuracy uh, and accurate access of news in contemporary times like all this new independent uh, media channel, channels and youtubers uh, what remains our responsibility is that uh, we just need to check the thing. We need to tell youth that just go for fact checking each and every time because this is we are living in the post truth era. Even journalists uh, from whom we expect the uh, good and true information, they are even they are spreading the uh, false news about certain things they are uh, they are much dependent on this fake news if you have see, seen this uh, chatty many of the tv news channels uh, they are just copy pasting the content of any government head or any other thing and they are not going for just a bit of fact checking and that thing. so checking facts is the first step to make youth aware about the journalism about proper journalism so this remains a concern so it is our responsibility to guide people uh, without that this huge firm has accessed most of the uh, attention of people in which it is very uh, terrifying as well so this is my answer thank you so much Hello everyone, I am Patna Goswami and today I am present, uh, going to present the old robot as an unplayable narrator in Julian Barnes' novel, The Own History. These are my personal academic information. These are the table of content. Uh, first, uh, discuss biography about author Julian Barnes. Uh, Julian Barnes is born on England on January 9, uh, 19, 1946. He was educated in London School and uh, London School, Oxford, uh, Oxford University. He was a work as the uh, uh, lexiographer for the Oxford English Dictionary supplements uh, in uh, 1960 to 1971. Uh, literary, uh, literary career as a reviewer, editor, editor uh, television critics for a publication like a New Statement, New Revision uh, observes. Uh, other uh, her major uh, uh, her uh, uh, notable uh, novel was the sense of the ending uh, the sense of the ending uh, flubber's uh, 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 flubber's uh, flubber's uh, 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 
Parrot and uh, England, uh, England, and other major airports for the some rest, some rest Mugam Award, Geo Ferry, Geo Ferry. Memorial, memorial prize, uh, memorial prize. Uh, about the novel, the novel take, uh, uh, the no, the novel take it uh, epigraph from Samuel Johnson definition of a novel as a small tale, generally of love, setting up the reader's explanation of the uh, of an uh, intimate and focused of love story. This novel is uh, divided in uh, three parts, uh, and also this novel is a uh, uh, first person there. First person narrator. The main uh, narrator was uh, Paul Robert uh, in uh, in this novel. The narrator Paul directly addressed the readers throughout the book, posing a philosophical question about the uh, about the love's uh, love's uh, in, uh, in, uh, inevitability uh, various joints. Paul is an unreliable narrator, telling his objectives the only uh, only story throughout the length of the flavored memory, which shape uh, and colors uh, the narrative. Uh, the opening quote asking whether one would uh, prefer to love more and suffer more of love less and suffer less take of a central dilemma all graphical bit throughout his uh, recovery. The novel pro uh, promising, uh, promises in a uh, intimate character study examine the joys and pain of an uh, all uh, consuming love affair uh, uh, our multiple uh, disputes. Uh, what is an unreliable narrator? Uh, an uh, unreliable narrator is a narrator, whether in literature, film, or theater, who is not uh, through uh, uh, trustworthy. His story cannot be taken uh, at a face value by the readers. He can uh, can't be trusted. Um, uh, unreliable narrator means uh, we cannot trust uh, uh, the uh, uh, narrator story. Unreliable narrator are almost by uh, definition first person narrators. The unreliability may, may be obvious to the readers throughout the novel. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, revealed uh, gradually, or uh, or many come in the single uh, uh, revelation that result in major plot. Fiction that challenge our uh, perceptions is powerful. Unreliable narrator may generate uh, ambiguity and uh, destroy uh, destroy a reality. Uh, enabling us to uh, draw our own uh, judgment. Uh, uh, in unreliable narrator, we also destroy a reality uh, and uh, express the author's own judgment in their own perspective. The unreliable, uh, unreliable narrator lives in the stories, universe, and uh, has enough in heart prejudice or uh, agenda. Will in unreliable narrator is a second or third person is possible it is uh, uncommon uh, the unreliable narrator is living in their uh, universe their own universe they they express their idea in a personal uh, personal experience and their point of view uh, these are the types of unreliable narrator uh, paul robert as an unreliable narrator uh, in the only story by julian Barnes, robert paul is a complex character who says as both uh, both Maternal and uh, counter uh, figure to be a protagonist. Paul Robert is a portrayal as a systematic uh, 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 adventure, adventure and a uh, and a worldly wise with a uh, patent uh, with uh, with for a challenging the society you know. As the unreliable narrator, Paul's uh, credibility is uh, uh, immediately called into question. The reader is forced to critically analyze his narration and question whether the event is uh, described or accurate or destroyed by the subjective experience. In the novel, we can see uh, in the we can see the Paul uh, Paul Robert character. Uh, there, uh, some of uh, some of the quotes are uh, some of the quotes are, are questionable. Uh, and, uh, questionable. So, I think that uh, these are the true true and uh, or not. Uh, uh, Paul, uh, Paul's unreality pulls uh, stems from a various factors, such as a mental inability, psychological issue, or a desire to justify his action or protect his self-image. Uh, self this could be make him a morally uh, morally character. Uh, Paul Robert, uh, Paul, uh, Paul Robert unreality expressed the idea of psychological issue and uh, desire to justify their uh, own character. It means Paul, uh, uh, Paul was uh, Paul was uh, 
एक्सप्रेस फेयर कैरेक्टर इज फुल्ली परफेक्ट कैरेक्टर एंड दे पोर्ट्रेट देयर कैरेक्टर वाज अ परफेक्ट टू टू द रीडर पोल कैरेक्टर दैट लाइकली इम इम इमरजेंस इज द इशू ऑफ पर्सपेक्टिव एंड वेज एज द नैरेटर पोल पोल्स पर्सपेक्शन ऑफ इवेंट इज इन इन in an ability colored by his personal experience a uh, pole character that likely emerges is the issue of perspective and basis as the narrator pulls in the per- uh, perception of uh, event is a uh, uh, in will uh, uh, in will be colored by his personal experience robert pole character likes to play a uh, pivotal roles in uh, creating uh, ambiguity and uh, uncertainty within the novel by uh, within the novel here has some import uh, he has done some importance uh, like whole narration is a given by his own uh, honest efforts to retain his life as a, in his view it really happened this line such as that whole is a given his objective per- perspective which may not align with objective reality uh, or uh, uh, or uh, repeatedly admired that in connection with the susan he can hardly recall uh, he can hardly recall the event exactly as they were and uh, in their right uh, oh, in their right order uh, all comes to realize that uh, all comes to realize that uh, that this long standing stress and emotional strain excuse uh, ex- ex- and uh, you uh, he made him to such as an exemps uh, extent uh, that he felt no remorse or uh, blame was emotionally numbed uh, uh, numbed uh, state during the event uh, could have uh, impaired his ability to uh, accurately per, uh, uh, perceiving uh, and recall them he comes to uh, uh, he comes to admit that the sad story of his first a uh, first true love may have been a de- determined for his uh, uh, subsequent life but that it is the by no means the only one is the conscience has had cope with this suggests the pole narration may be focused on his perspective alone uh, key events and emotional impact uh, so this, these are some examples of the no- examples of the novel uh, firstly i uh, support this uh, quote uh, uh, express uh, support is uh, support the poll uh, support the uh, this quote uh, uh, robert poll is an uh, unreliable narrator as a narrator i would not be attempting to offer my audience objective facts of uh, recall uh, recognizing uh, recognizable reality but rather my high colored perception and interpretations give without any third party or factor contribution to uh, de- demo- demonstrate this uh, as a accurate uh, or an event to such suggest my awareness of my personal basis uh, these are three uh, uh, quote uh, taken by a uh, uh, novel would you rather love uh, would you rather love the more and suffer the more or love the love the less and suffer the less that is i think finally the only real question this uh, uh, the, uh, this uh, what expressed the idea paul robert is a unreliable narrator by framing his day, uh, deeply uh, deeply personal philosophy deeply personal philosophy uh, philosophy the only story real great question uh, revealing his uh, revealing his failure uh, failure point of view in the world uh, i think Second, uh, second quote. I keep, uh, I keep saying that I was nineteen, but sometimes in what I have told you so far, I was twenty or uh, twenty-one. These events happened uh, over a period of uh, two years uh, and more. Uh, this, uh, this uh, quote is expressed. I uh, um, uh, tell, tell, tell that Robert Paul Unreliable as a narrator, as an admit to. pro pro uh, conflicting details about this age uh, this uh, his age uh, the event two years or uh, two years or more uh, you and uh, the third part you understand i hope that i am telling you everything as i remember it. i never gave i never kept a diary 
and most of the uh, participants in my story, my story, my life, uh, have, uh, have either did, uh, did or far disappeared. In this dialogue, we can see, in this dialogue, we can see a believing his perspective on the event in the only one that, uh, in the only one that uh, truly matter, uh, truly matter the potential for others' viewpoints. Uh, the first person, unreal the narrator, never suggests that uh, they are lighting the gold of their world by offering you um, mutually agree upon objectivity, but rather gives you his or her own view of what happened and why it uh, appears so important that it, it needs to become a story. Uh, most of the uh, what, uh, most of us have only one story to tell. I don't mean that only one. I don't uh, mean only one thing happier to us in our lives. There are a, con a, a complex event which we turn into a complex story. But they are only one uh, that matters. Only one find worth telling this my this is mine. In this quote, uh, we can see a robot called express there. My uh, you the my uh, my story is worthless. My story is telling. My story is worthless. My story is matter. So we can express the we can still see the unreality uh, unreality uh, of a character of a Robert Cole. If this is your only uh, second word, if this is your only story, then it's uh, then uh, then it's the one you have a most often told and retold. Even uh, even if as the case here, uh, mindfully to yourself. The question then is: Do all this retelling bring you closer to truth? Of what happened, or move you farther away? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. In this dialogue, we can see the belief his perspective on even uh, uh, perspective, uh, perspective in uh, event, and he was not sure. Uh, he was telling about their past story. Uh, third dialogue. I said I never kept a diary. This uh, this isn't a uh, stray, uh, uh, strictly true. There was a point in my uh, isolation and uh, turmoil term when I uh, thought the writing things down myself. I used a hard back notebook, black ink, one side of the paper. I tried to be objective. There was no point. I thought I in a um, in a mad, uh, in a madly writing. My feeling of hurt. Uh, my feeling was. Uh, my feeling of hurt and. Uh, uh, in this dialogue, we can see the Robert uh, Robert uh, Robert uh, Robert Paul uh, was a uh, uh, tell the story, the past story, and he he tell that he was a uh, hurt. Uh, he, uh, he gave one diary and uh, he gave one diary and uh, discrimination of the diary, and also he tell that he was a uh, uh, that feeling he was uh, hurt by uh, uh, so so he he. Uh, he only uh, these uh, these are some uh, these are some dialogues express the idea. But Robert Paul only think about it. He was uh, emotionally there. he was uh, suffer so many things. Uh, suffer so many things. Uh, he uh, so, suffer so many things and uh, their feeling was uh, their, their feeling uh, was uh, hurted by numbers. So these are the only third perspective. On uh, these are the only third perspective. He, he, he only tell their story. Uh, what others. Uh, uh, what others suffer, what others matter, uh, they don't tell. Uh, con uh, now I conclude in my presentation. Paul Roberts uh, self as the prime, uh, prime, prime example of unreliable character is Barnes Novel. His account is uh, fundamentally shaped by his subjective perspective and personal uh, and personal behavior, uh, personal behavior uh, com uh, comprehension, the objectivity of his narration. Paul, uh, Paul openly acknowledged the pra fragmented and uh, in, uh, in a consistent nature of his memory. His narrative lacked contribution uh, evidence of a third party perspective, leaving the reader to grab with the subjectivity his soul accounted. Uh, so, you know, we can see the Paul Robert uh, uh, as, as an uh, unreliable narrator here. Uh, in this, uh, in this story, we can know 
we can know uh, we can know the idea in third party third party perspective and their point of view only we can see the point of view in the robot pole perspective so that's why we can the uh, robot pole as the only other parent uh, these are my references now The person. My question is that how does Paul Roberts self doubt about his memories and perception in the only story make him seem less trustworthy as a narrator? And what does this tell us about how stories are told? Uh, 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 Robert, old Robert self doubt about his memory and perception in the only story made him seem so uh, trust, uh, trust, uh, trustworthy as a narrator. Now, uh, I think uh, Robert Paul, uh, Robert, uh, Robert Paul, uh, uh, <clears throat> Robert Paul narr uh, narration was not uh, trustworthy, uh, trustworthy just beca uh, because he was an unreliable narrator. That's why he can uh, unreliable narrator. So that's why uh, uh, the Robert Paul character does not uh, trustworthy because uh, he can only uh, express their idea only their, their point of view and uh, their exp experience. And the and the does tell us about how story are told. What does this tell us about how story are told? Uh, uh, what does this uh, this tell us about how story are told? He tell about he tells about only he suffer uh, he suffer in their life. He hurt by someone. He uh, ex, uh, Robert Paul ex, uh, ex, uh, only tell their uh, their life uh, experience and their point of view uh, in the novel. Upasna, how does Paul's unreliable narration influence uh, the reader's ability to sympathize or empathize with, with his character in Dawn Whisper? Paul uh, uh, Roberts as an unreliable can make the reader question, uh, question, uh, question, and, uh, question in a judgment, motivation, and in the motivation and uh, their own perspective. It, uh, uh, own perspective impact, uh, perspective impact, uh, impact, impact, uh, on the, impact on a sympathize or empathize, uh, that, uh, empathize that, that's why he was, he, uh, he was, their, their vision, their vision of the world is the, their vision of the, their version of the event may be doubt, uh, doubtable. Okay, so that was the last uh, presentation. And uh, by and large, uh, most of you are doing whatever instructions we were giving earlier about citations, uh, in text citations, reference to uh, good resources. Uh, that all is quite well found uh, in most of the presentations. The bearing of you who are not able to do like. Uh, in Sierra, was not having in-text citations, I think, in the slides. Then Payal is still putting the websites. Uh, that is not the correct way. Uh, now you are, because we have studied research methodology paper. So uh, you are aware that things should be avoided. We had everybody doing quite well. This time we have a two who has not followed this pattern. Alphabetical order is important in one or two presentations. That also you check alphabetically things uh, should be properly given. So that is uh, quite fine. Things are improving. And now we will give uh, a reminder for those things. But if you want to move a step ahead uh, from here, if you want to improve uh, the thing, then you have to 
So argument, how to make argument, you make one title and based uh, on that title, uh, how you make argument. Remember our workshop that we have done, how to convert your topic into argument. So you questions. So today we have some questions in the link. Pooja and Dushma is present in the initial slides. So that pattern everybody can follow that we put some questions in the initial part. And then to answer those uh, questions, so, uh, you have to first prepare the, the scaffolding of the argument. Means you have to uh, uh, root that argument in a larger discourse. So what is the debate ongoing? Where does this topic stand in? And then what you are trying to do with the help of some articles, the textual evidence and your conclusions that you try to see there. Uh, so, for example, in Manzi's case, uh, when you do that uh, transgender, so the first thing that you should uh, do is to see that transgender, uh, seminal right transgender, which is very important to be uh, identified. And in the workshop, we have suggested you that you can use resources like OpenAlex to see that. So I can give you the idea that there are you can get the International Journal of Transgenderism and then there is Journal of Homosexuality. Now, are you getting articles from these journals to cite somewhere or to write? Then it becomes qualitative. So many of the citations are from uh, not very uh, good journals. So uh, the concern may be how to reach the good journals. That's why we have done a workshop and I, I hope you can follow those things in your presentation. We are still going through the things so by force we can see whether you have got ideas from the workshop or not. But here you can find that, that uh, at least in that case you can see that. Then you come to know what people talk about uh, things in transgender. On Nirali, it's on, uh, on uh, corruption. So you also can try to think that what is has given the definition of corruption. You have put the definition of corruption, uh, which is very general, but if you even refer to uh, Wikipedia, we, somewhere you will find that economist uh, Ian Singer defined corruption as an action to influence. So we are looking for somebody who has said something in some uh, work which is below the world. Here we get uh, Senior I in 2006, corruption, the world's biggest of economic of London. So, that if you reach then it is something what we are looking for. So, that way, you would like to log in uh, into uh, this uh, debates of uh, corruption idea. Uh, Pooja, we developed that Google Earth also worked very well in, 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 to locate the journey and all the things also. So that is a good idea that Google Earth can give you a presentation kind of a thing and you can explore that. Uh, Rajaswari on power dynamics, uh, human project, also. It's all like you to a uh, quality access to see uh, where you can find those things. In wrinkles also was good. Uh, well, but again, you have to see objectification. Who talks about objectification? Male gaze. Who are the pioneers? So you root your things in that. Uh, Dushali also uh, did good work with contemporary reactions. You just have to see freedom of press, basic documents of freedom of uh, press. Uh, from where this idea of uh, uh, point that press should have freedom. Who, who talks about uh, why, why should we have a uh, press having a freedom? In monarchy, it's never like that. So, democracy has this all necessary conditions. So, this book is the fourth estate in the constitution freedom of press in America. So, from there, the ideas are coming. Otherwise, people will say, why, why we should give freedom to yeah. So, there is something that has been thought in the past. And the other devs agreed upon those ideas. So it is accessible now, those things are challenged today. So that way, uh, this book also reports the borders. This also has uh, that reference. When they have 
done so many seminars, conferences, workshops, and we work with United Nations, UNESCO. So anything somewhere goes wrong, United Nations and some countries will make some comments. Try to tell the government that well, there is some problem, we try to rectify uh, is it proper or not, look into it. That way, these all agencies, they are NGO. They try to keep on telling this is freedom of the press where you find lots of reference about uh, how things all this uh, very serious matter in many parts of the country this shows uh, the red part very serious matter for freedom of press <laughs> that's how it is uh, so uh, this is uh, uh, things a bit where you keep locking your argument when we those are things Okay, so that is uh, now. Uh, I hope I want to give further reminders for uh, peer and self-education. Title of uh, the things there. Sometimes because of all the things you tell that AI is better than humans. You tell AI without failure can do that, but humans uh, again and again reminder after reminder. It is fourth time, second year. Still, we are not. And machine learning is too fast. Human learning is too terrible. Okay. And, and yet, human learning says that no, natural intelligence is better than artificial intelligence. We are, every day face human problem and machine problem. And we find that machines are better to reach than human beings. You tell the machine one thing, the machine will never fail. But humans, even after two years, fourth season of education, simple things like uh, give your peer education. Reminder is required, copy, reminder is required, otherwise people don't work, and that is what we are seeing. Otherwise, you will not be okay. If you don't see the experience of this, this is our class, and we are just 20 people here. There are 8 billion people in the world. Imagine what situation it might be. These are master's students, these are not educated people, these are all master's students. And, uh, so, the cream of the, the citizen of the world. Also, in this manner, then how other people might be behaving in the world. Also. So, I hope next three days, uh, reminders uh, will be required to uh, anybody. Okay, we are ending a very long, around 7 30, and now.